Kim Woojing was in his first year at Junseo High School, and there he was one of the most respected students, as he was the strongest guy in the entire high school. One day, Kim was walking with his friends, and he decided to show them his strength by hitting a special machine with all his might, on which Kim was able to reach 998 points. Kim's friends were shocked that Kim was able to break the record so easily and achieve almost the maximum number of points per stroke. After testing his strength, Kim invited his friends to walk a little more, but they said that it was time for them to go home, since they all had to go to school tomorrow. As soon as Kim and her friends were getting ready to go home, they noticed how one girl also decided to hit the machine gun. This girl turned out to be so strong that when she hit the machine gun, it simply broke. Kim and her friends could not believe that this simple-looking girl could break this machine gun with one blow. This incident with the machine gun radically changed Kim's opinion that he was the strongest person in the entire school. Kim gained his popularity at school when he beat one of the students in his second year of high school. For the most part, Kim didn't care how much stronger his opponent might be, since he absolutely always won. After some time, Kim began to think that there was simply no one left at school with whom he could match his strength. One day, Kim saw girls perform tricks with bending a spoon. Lee so Yun, who broke the machine, also wanted to show how to bend spoons, and after a couple of seconds she showed everyone the spoon curled into a ball. Kim could not even imagine that in all this time he could have missed such a strong opponent, and he wanted to fight Lee at any cost. However, Kim could not even imagine how it would be better for him to challenge her to a fight. Even though Lee was a girl, Kim was surprised at how she could have such great power. Kim believed that Lee was the strongest person not only in the school, but in the entire area. While Kim was thinking about how he could better challenge Lee, he heard from his classmates that today's gym class would be with the girls and they would be playing dodgeball during the class. Kim thought this would be a great opportunity to beat Lee in class since he was the best dodgeball player. An hour later, physical education class began, where students began to divide into teams for a game of dodgeball. When the teams were assembled, the teacher sat on the bench and began to play on the phone, while the students already began to play. The boys' team threw the ball first, telling the girls' team that they weren't going to give in and were going to beat the girls. After that, from the girls' side, a ball flew into the face of one of the boys with lightning speed after which this boy sat down on the bench of the eliminated players. Then Kim swung with all his might and threw the ball towards Lee, hoping that he would be able to hit. However, contrary to Kim's expectations, Lee manages to duck to the ground and dodge Kim's throw. During the game, Kim and Lee tried to hit each other throughout the game, thereby accidentally hitting other players. After some time, almost all the players were sitting on the bench of the eliminated players. Meanwhile, Kim and Lee were the only players left on the field. Kim noticed that Lee was already completely exhausted, and he decided to take advantage of this moment and throw the ball at her with all his strength. For the first time in the entire game, Kim manages to hit Lee with the ball, who began to fall to the ground. Kim was incredibly happy that he was able to prove that he was much stronger than Lee. However, instead of falling to the ground, Lee grabbed the ball with both hands, tensed her legs and was able to stay on the ground after throwing such a force. Kim couldn't believe what was happening, seeing in front of him how Lee was able to resist his throw. At that moment, the bell rang and Kim didn't want his battle with Kim to end so suddenly. Several more lessons passed, and towards evening the lessons ended and the students began to get ready to go home. Kim was not happy with the fact that his battle with Lee today ended in a draw, and he promised himself that next time he would definitely defeat her. At one point, Lee knocked Kim out of his thoughts and suggested that he go home together, since they still live in the same apartment, and she needed to have a serious conversation with him. Kim felt that Lee wanted to fight him again, and that this would be a good opportunity to defeat her and become the strongest student in school again. As a result, Kim agrees to Lee's request to go home together, and for the first half of the road they simply walked in silence. At one point, Kim finally decides to ask Lee what she wanted to talk to him about. Then Lee stopped and asked Kim directly if he liked her. Kim was shocked by what he heard, because he did not understand why Lee suddenly made such a conclusion. Lee said she's noticed Kim staring at her more and more lately, and after the dodgeball incident, her doubts about it only grew stronger. Kim wanted to try to justify all his actions towards Lee, but he couldn't tell her that he wanted to fight her. Then Lee herself suggested that Kim was doing all this just to fight with her. Lee also added that even if he wants to fight with her, he must understand that it is disgusting if he wants to fight with a girl who is much smaller than him, 
which made Kim feel very ashamed. At that moment, a huge and pumped-up man appeared behind Kim, and when Lee saw him, she said that it was her father who had come. When Kim turned around, he saw in front of him two huge pumped-up men who were many times larger than himself. Out of fear, Kim stood in a stupor, after which he remembered that he had not said hello, and immediately bowed down in front of the man. After that, the beefy man asked what this guy was doing next to his sister. After that, Kim greeted an even larger and beefier man, who turned out to be Lee's father. Then two pumped-up men surrounded Kim, and asked if he was friends with Lee. Kim could only look at Lee and not understand that she had such a strange family. Father Lee asked Kim why he wears his hair that color when school rules require students to wear their natural hair color. Kim just looked at Lee's father, and told him that it was his personal business what hair color he should wear. Then Brother Lee became very angry and was going to hurt Kim for his disrespectful address to his father. Lee told her brother Hanbiel that she had repeatedly told him that he should wear a school uniform since no one saw him as a high school student. Hanbiel said that even though he is only 14 years old, no one would believe that he is a student even if he wears a school uniform. Father Lee was very interested in the fact that Kim, without any fear, spoke so boldly to him and his son, while any other person would faint just by looking at them. Then Father Lee told Kim that despite the fact that Kim was several times smaller than him, he had very great willpower. Lee told her father that Kim was currently one of the leaders at the school. Hearing this, Hanbiel and his father laughed loudly at the statement. Lee then told her father and brother that it was true, even though he dyed his hair, dressed like a bully, and had a very skinny build. Lee added that even with all of Kim's qualities, she still felt sorry for them to laugh at him so openly. While Hanbiel and his father continued to laugh loudly at Kim, he began to cry and ran away, shouting to Lee that she was the worst in this situation. After this incident, Lee and his brother and father returned home hungry. Lee's equally pumped-up mother met her with her father and brother, and said that they would have curry for dinner today. When everyone changed clothes and took a shower, the whole family sat down at the table and began to have dinner. While eating, Lee noticed that the food only contained chicken, vegetables and tofu, and that there was no rice at all. In response, the father said that there should be no carbohydrates in their food. While Father Lee was eating his food, he looked at his daughter and noticed that her arms were too thin. Then Hanbiel also said that his sister was only skin and bones, to which his mother replied that Lee should have slightly thin arms since she is a girl. After that, Lee's father asked his daughter what her relationship was with the guy they met today. Lee noticed that her father and brother began to laugh again, and she said that he really was the leader of the school. Meanwhile, Kim's older sister wanted to call him to come down to the kitchen and have dinner together. However, when Kim's older sister opened the door to his room, she saw him lying on his bed and crying. Kim's older sister wanted to know why her brother was crying now, because before he didn't cry even in such situations when he was losing some kind of fight, and she thought that it was all because of some girl. Assuming that it was really the girl, Kim's older sister told him that she understood what Kim was going through now, since when she was 17 years old, she also experienced her first failed relationship. Kim raised his head and shouted to his sister to leave his room and sit down to dinner without him. Meanwhile, Lee's father still wanted to know what his daughter's relationship was with that guy to which she said that they were just studying in the same class. The father said that for the first time he saw his daughter returning home with a guy, from which he concluded that they were in love. Lee denied her father's theory, and said there was nothing like that between them. Then Hanbiel invited her to play and asked her who she would save if they were in the water, him or Kim. Then Lee imagined a situation in which her brother and Kim found themselves in the water. Lee knew that if this happened— then her brother would not have any difficulties in such a situation. Lee also believed that if her brother were in such a situation with Kim, then Hanbiel would try to get rid of Kim at the first opportunity. Without thinking twice, Lee said that the first thing she would do would be to save Kim Woojum. Hearing this, Hanbiel began to tease his sister, telling her that she had fallen in love with this guy. However, Lee's father told his son that if he were in her place, he would also save Kim after which he told his son to stop talking nonsense and calm down. Meanwhile, Kim went outside after lunch to take out the trash from the house. While Kim was walking down the street, he was thinking about how he could deal with Lee so that rumors would definitely spread about it. At first, Kim thought that it would be enough to tell her about the proposal to hold a fight, but he abruptly changed his mind, considering that this was a bad idea. While Kim was walking down the street, 
he saw how some thug began to pester one girl the girl tried to explain as clearly as possible to the drunken and angry thug that they could not be together the girl said that she was extremely ashamed of the behavior of this thug who was not asking this girl to date for the first time then the girl repeated once again that she would not under any circumstances meet with him which only angered the thug even more what angered the thug even more was that throughout the entire conversation the girl looked at him as if he were something disgusting the thug's patience has been completely exhausted and he decides to use force since he was unable to convince her with words a moment before the blow kim manages to intervene and hit the drunken thug in the face with all his might this girl and a couple of other girls were surprised at how such a frail guy at first glance not only was not afraid of this thug but also successfully neutralized him during the strike kim did not hesitate to call the thug a piece of trash for such inappropriate behavior kim's blow was so strong that the thug lost consciousness and lay on the ground with a bloody face however this blow did not cause kim any of the positive emotions that he gets in a fight since the only opponent who could arouse his interest was still lee the girl chuckled quietly and said that kim had once again helped her and that he still had the same fighting character kim turned to face the girl looked closely at her and did not understand who she was then kim tried to remember this girl replaying a bunch of different memories from his life in his head however kim was never able to remember who this girl was and how she knew him the girl interrupted kim's thoughts and told him that he had grown a lot since their last meeting because when they were in elementary school they were about the same height to which kim replied that she had also changed a lot pretending that he recognized her taking a closer look at the girl kim noticed that she was dressed in the sports uniform of juncio's school after which he told her that he was also studying there in the third grade and that she could visit him after which he said that it was time for him to go to one important case the girl stopped kim and told him that usually no one goes to important business dressed like this to which he replied that no one would care what clothes he wears then the girl said that if no one cares about his appearance then this is not such an important meeting after that the girl extended her hand to kim in honor of the first such meeting in so many years in response kim extended his hand and shook the girl's hand which made them both equally pleased to see each other the next day rumors spread throughout the school that kim had defeated one of the third-year high school students the previous night everyone was surprised that in such a short time in high school kim had already killed so many people during one of the breaks kim's classmates were surprised by an unexpected visit from one of the school's students this student turned out to be the same girl whom kim had helped on the street last night and she wanted to visit him the guys knew this girl as osiho who was the queen of kanso high school after which one of the guys pointed her to the place where kim usually sat siho walked up to kim and handed him his favorite chocolate milk as a token of gratitude for helping her yesterday kim took the milk and said that he did it because he was disgusted by the behavior of this guy siho asked kim what he was doing just now to which he replied that he was just thinking a little while kim drank his milk he looked at Lee and already imagined in his head how he would fight with her. Siho also began to stare at Lee and think that Kim had fallen in love with Lee. At that moment, Lee felt as many as two people were already looking at her intently, which only frightened her more. Lee became so nervous about this that she accidentally broke her pen while writing in her notebook. Back in elementary school, Kim became Siho's first real friend. Kim and Siho were such good friends that when they were kids, they developed a special friendly handshake that they always used to greet each other. Many years had passed since that moment, and despite this, Siho still remembered every movement of that handshake. However, Siho was offended that she and Kim stopped communicating with each other so quickly. After class, Siho watched Kim and Lee doing pull-ups together on the horizontal bars. During the exercises, Lee began to imitate Kim for sweating so quickly during pull-ups on the horizontal bar. Kim told Lee that he sweats like that all the time even when he's not doing weight training, but Lee didn't believe him at all. Then Kim rose above the horizontal bar and asked Lee if she could do the same. Lee was shocked by what she saw, as she had never done this before. Kim only teased Lee more, telling her that even a strong woman like her couldn't do something like that. Lee was so annoyed by Kim's behavior that, out of anger, she simply squeezed the bar in the places where she was holding onto it. Siho just looked at everything that was happening with Kim and Lee and didn't understand how a guy like Kim could like a girl like Lee. The longer Siho looked at Kim and Lee, the more angry she became at what she saw in front of her. Towards evening, Siho went to one of the stores to buy a can of soda. But when Siho was about to take the last can of soda, Lee was next to her, 
who also wanted to buy herself a soda. The girls recognized each other, and it was clear from their gaze that they were not at all happy about such a meeting. Siho immediately pretended that she was happy to see Lee and said that she often sees her together with Kim. Siho then told Lee that she was willing to give up the last can of soda to Lee if she wanted it so much. Lee was very scared by Siho's behavior, but she did not argue with her and took the last can of soda. A couple of minutes later, Lee was standing outside the store, drinking her favorite soda, while Siho was slowly sipping a carton of juice. After a minute, Siho finished her juice and asked Lee if she was dating Kim. Lee almost choked when she heard this question and replied that she and Kim had no relationship. Lee also added that she wouldn't date some guy who dyes his hair blonde and tries to act like he's the coolest guy in the whole world. Siho was surprised that despite Lee spending so much time with Kim, she spoke so poorly about him. At that moment, Dong Sok appeared in front of the girls, the same guy from whom Kim had recently protected Siho on the street. He was incredibly angry when Lee mentioned Kim, and he wanted to know where Kim was now. Lee was so frightened that out of fear she accidentally squeezed the can of soda in her hand. Dong Sik got angry at Lee's sudden yelling and told her to shut up, which she did. Siho didn't understand why this guy started appearing next to her so often and it was starting to piss her off very much. Having looked a little closer, Siho and this guy is the same thug who pestered her last night. Siho asked Dong Sik why he came here, to which he replied that he wanted to take revenge on Kim for breaking his nose yesterday. Then Dong Sik rudely asked Siho where Kim was now, to which she replied that she didn't know where Kim was now, and even if she knew, she would never have told him. Then Dong Sok began to threaten Siho with terrible reprisals if she didn't call Kim here right away. Despite such loud and severe threats, Siho completely refused to invite Kim here, which only angered Dong Sik more. At that moment, Lee interrupted Siho's conversation with Dong Sik and began jumping between them, thereby trying to attract attention to herself. Siho was a little surprised by such courage and did not understand what she needed to do in such a situation. Lee, like a little girl, apologized for interfering and politely asked Dong Sik and Siho to stop arguing with each other. Lee said that she knows how irritable Kim can be, but despite all this, this situation has nothing to do with him, and she suggests that Dong Sik look for him at school tomorrow. However, Dong Sik didn't listen to Lee any further, and he simply grabbed her head. An enraged Dong Sik began shaking Lee and shouting at her that he had to deal with Kim right now. Lee asked Dong Sik to let her go but he only started shaking her harder. After a few seconds, Dong Sik got tired of holding Lee's head and shaking it, so he let go and hit her on the cheek. After that, Dong Sik grabbed Lee by the hair and told Siho to call Kim here right now if she doesn't want to see him kill Lee. Then Lee began to laugh softly, which made Dong Sik begin to pull her hair even harder. Then Lee hit Dong Sik in the stomach with her elbow with all her might and he let go of her in pain. Lee's blow was so strong that Dong Sik fell to his knees and began screaming in pain. Siho was shocked that Lee was able to neutralize such a big guy like Dong Sik so easily. Ten years ago, Father Lee said that there are many different dangerous things and situations in this world, from harassment to demon attacks. Even though Lee's father is always ready to protect Lee and her little brother, he still has to prepare them for anything so that even alone they can cope with any danger. From that moment on, Lee's father taught her and Hanbyul various attack and self-defense techniques for several years. Dong Sik was about to hit Lee as hard as possible, but she easily dodged his attack. No matter how quickly or aggressively Dong Sik tried to inflict any damage on Lee, she managed to dodge each of his attacks without any problems. Siho just watched Lee and Dong Sik's battles from the sidelines and never ceased to be amazed at how skillfully Lee managed to dodge Dong Sik's blows. A few seconds later, Lee still hit Dong Sik in the face, thereby managing to stop and neutralize him. After that, Lee was going to kick Dong Sik in the head as hard as possible in order to knock him down as quickly and effectively as possible. The last thing Dong Sik saw when he found himself on the ground was Lee's fist the impact of which immediately knocked him unconscious. After this, several people appeared at the scene of the fight and wanted to know what happened here. At that moment, Lee grabbed Siho's hand and they began to run away, as Lee was afraid that passers-by would recognize them by their school uniforms and report what had happened to the school. A couple of minutes later, Lee and Siho left the scene of the fight so quickly that Siho's breathing increased greatly. After a few seconds, Siho caught her breath and asked Lee why she helped her. Siho told Lee that even when she was slapped, she did not run away, but fought back against Dong Sik, 
without fear that sooner or later even those who might be much stronger than Dong Seek might attack her. Li recalled a moment from her childhood when, after a long and hard training in self-defense, she wanted to quit and not practice anymore. Then Father Li turned his daughter's attention to Hanviel, who, despite his lack of strength, still continued to try his best. Li's father then told her that if she continued to train as hard as her younger brother, she would be able to protect not only herself, but anyone else around her. Then Li told Siho that she just helped her in such a difficult situation, and she is not at all afraid if some stronger guys come after her, since she can defeat them as easily as Sunbei. Siho looked at Li and thought that she was really cool, and she understood why she attracted Kim's attention so much. But even despite this, Siho still considered Li to be very cool and her number one enemy, against whom she would fight for Kim's attention. After the fight, Dong Suk came to his senses and went up to the roof of one of the buildings with his friend Yang Su Yun to smoke and recover. At this time, Yang was taunting Dong Seek because he was first beaten by a first year high school student, and now he was beaten by a girl. In his defense, Dong Seek told Yang that all this talk about him being beaten by a girl was nothing more than rumors. Then Yang asked Dong Seek if he was really beaten by Kim Wujun, who was not afraid to get into a fight with anyone. Dong Seek was very annoyed that his friend decided to make fun of him in difficult times. However, Yang also added that since Kim Wujun entered high school, the situation has become more hectic as this guy had already gotten into fights with some of Yang's friends from other schools. This situation made Yang so angry that he could not concentrate on his studies, and he promised to take revenge on Kim for everything he had done. The next morning, Kim went to school and was met on the way by his friend Yung Sihian. Chan said that he was aware of what was going on between Kim and Lee, but Kim himself did not understand what Sihian was talking about. Jung then said that he knows that Kim has a crush on Lee so Yun from his class. Jong said that Kim was looking at Lee too much and that he was too obvious about his interest in her. Jong also said that Kim had repeatedly shown his feelings for Lee through provocative actions. Kim told his friend that it was none of his business, from which Chan concluded that Kim really liked Lee. Kim then said that what he really liked about Lee was that her strength was many times greater than his. Kim also said that he would love to fight Lee, but he would never fight a girl in his life. Kim added that he only compares his strength to Lee's through various low-impact competitions. Chan listened to what Kim was saying and realized that his friend was just an idiot. Meanwhile, Lee and his friends so he were discussing what menu would be in the school cafeteria today, and after learning today's menu, they both decide to go to the cafeteria. Once at the buffet, Lee and Sohee were horrified by the fact that there were so many people in the buffet, which made them think that they wouldn't eat today. At that moment, Dong Suk emerged from the crowd with a chocolate bun and a packet of popcorn, glad that he had so easily managed to grab some food from the buffet. Lee noticed Dong Seek among the crowd, walked up to him and politely asked him to share some food. Dong Seek was afraid that Lee was going to beat him again, and out of fear, he fell to the floor wet his pants, and gave Lee and Sohee all his food, despite the fact that Lee asked him to share a little of his food as politely as possible. After that, Lee and Sohee ate half a bun each, which didn't make their hunger go away, and Sohee asked Lee what connected her with that guy in the buffet. When the still-hungry Lee and Sohee entered the office, they saw Kim sitting in front of them with his legs thrown up on the desk. Kim just had one whole bun, with which he teased the already hungry Lee a little. Lee said that she was very hungry, and Kim told her that he would give her the bun if she fought him and beat him. Lee had no choice, and she was ready for any battle just to satisfy her hunger. However, Kim said that he was not going to fight her, and that he had already thought of what they would compete in. Meanwhile, in the hallway, Yang wanted to find Kim and deal with him as soon as possible, but he couldn't find him. Then Yang asked the girls passing by in which office Kim Wujun studied. When Ian found the office he needed and entered it, something small immediately flew towards him. Ian managed to react and catch the object flying at him, and it turned out to be an ordinary table tennis ball. After that, Yang took a closer look at the guy who asked him to return the ball, and he recognized him as the same Kim Wujun that Dong Seek told him about. However, Yang still did not understand what Kim and Lee were doing now. Then Kim replied that he and Lee were currently having a table tennis shoe battle. When Kim again asked Ian to return the ball to them, Ian simply took it and squeezed it. Then Yang made the most serious expression on his face and said that he came here to talk to Kim. But Kim did not take Ian seriously and took out another tennis ball from his pocket 
which he secretly stole from the physical education teacher. Ian was very angry at how Kim blatantly ignored his instructions. Then, out of anger, Yang kicked the desks on which Kim and Lee were playing with all his might to the side. After that, Yang took the ball from Kim threw it out the window and once again asked Kim to come out and talk to him. Then Kim pulled out another ball from his pocket, after which Yang hit Kim in the face. At that moment, Lee took out the bag of popcorn that Dong Si gave her and looked at everything that was happening in front of her. Yang told Kim that he had crossed the threshold to which Yang could continue to tolerate his behavior. However, Kim only laughed at Yang and told him that his punch was nothing special. At that moment, she watched with all interest and attention what was happening now while some other students tried to take the popcorn from her. Kim invited Yang to fight him here and now, since he was annoying him so much, which only made Yang angrier. The day before, Yang and Dong Seek discussed how Yang was going to deal with Kim. Yang believed that Kim only fights strong guys, and therefore he is unlikely to refuse to fight him. Yang said that he will find Kim and challenge him to a fight tomorrow at school since he has practice exams today. After that, Yen stood up and was about to leave finally saying that tomorrow he and all his intelligentsia would resolve the issue with him as quietly as possible. Dong Sok looked at everything that was happening between Kim and Yang and was extremely surprised. Dong Sik looked at this and did not understand how Yang himself was making so much noise, while the students looked at Dong Sik and laughed at his appearance. Yang grinned at the fact that the first-year high school student not only wasn't afraid, but even offered to fight him. After this, Yang ordered Kim to come to the wasteland after classes, where their battle would take place. After class, Kim went to the wasteland to fight Yang. However, Kim's way was blocked by Chan, who said that all the students were already talking about their fight today. Chan advised Kim to apologize to Yang and avoid a fight, but Kim no longer listened to him. Leaving the school, Li and so he heard Yung telling Kim who Yang really was. Chan told Kim that the most dangerous guys used to study at Junseo High School, and two years ago, Yang became the one who dared to fight back all the bullies in the school, after which, Chan also added that it would be better for Kim to retreat, since Yang was able to clear the school of hooligans without any problems and restore order in it. However, Chan's words not only did not convince Kim to give up the fight, but also made him more inclined to fight with Yang. Li and Suhi started laughing loudly at what they had just heard from Kim. Then Kim noticed Li and Suhi laughing at him and invited them to go with him, and watch him defeat Yang. Towards evening, Kim came to the vacant lot, where Ian and several other guys were already waiting for him. Kim noticed that besides Yang, several other people came here, and he thought that Yang wanted to outnumber Kim, to which Yang replied that all these people came here as spectators. Having looked closely at several guys, Kim believed that he had already seen these faces somewhere, and then Kim recognized these people as several hooligans he used to know, and he was shocked by what Yang did to them. Yang told Kim that he arrived three minutes later than the meeting time he had indicated, for which Yang already wanted to deal with Kim as quickly as possible, since high school graduates always had very little time. Kim asked Yang what he had done with these people, to which Yang replied that he had set them on the right path. Yang also added that after he defeats Kim in battle, he will also guide him on the right path and make him a decent student. Kim immediately interrupted Ian and told him that it was time for them to start fighting, since he himself was worried about his time. Then Yang stood up, took off his glasses and prepared for the battle ahead of him and Kim. Within seconds, Yang and Kim were engaged in a fierce battle against each other. One of the spectators watched the battle and thought that despite the fact that Kim fights decently, he will still become as decent a student as they are. Another viewer said that Kim has a fierce and stern look, and that Kim will lose the battle against Yang today. A third viewer said that she did see Kim as a worthy opponent for Yang, but she also believed that despite his best efforts, there was no way Kim could defeat Yang. At one point in the battle, Kima finally managed to inflict significant damage on Yang's arm. Despite the severe pain, Yang did not give up and tried to continue the battle in this state. Then the audience immediately began to support Kim and ask him to defeat Yang and rid the school of his dictatorial system. In response to this reaction, Yang said that he remembered the faces of everyone who just said this. Then all the spectators fell silent, put on a decent appearance, and continued to silently watch the fight. The moment Kim asked Lee to come with him and watch his fight with Yang, she knew that it would be an interesting spectacle in which the head of the first class fought against the head of the third class. However, Lee had repeatedly heard from other students how skillfully Kim fought, but she had never seen how Kim fought against such serious opponents as Yang. However, 
In Li Yang's eyes, she also did not look like some kind of strong and difficult opponent, and so she was doubly curious as to why they were both considered the main ones in the school. So he asked Li if she would go to watch Kim and Yang fight, to which Li replied that they were both going to watch their fight. So he told Li that she would love to go with her, but she was a little scared. Li said that it is normal for a person to exhibit deviant behavior in such situations, which confused Suhi a little. Then Li began to persuade Suhi to go along, and Siho said that she would also go with them. Li and Suhi were very scared by Siho's sudden appearance, and she said that she had just left school and was also going to go watch Kim and Yang fight, and she began to ask to go with them. Li and Suhi thought that Siho really likes to watch other people fight. But Siho said that she doesn't like it at all when someone fights, and she said with an embarrassed face that she just wanted to watch the fight. Yang looked at Kim and thought that he was much stronger than he expected. Kim also looked at Ian and hoped that he could easily defeat him if he fought with half his strength, but apparently he would have to give his all for an unconditional victory. Then Kim invited Yang to bet that if Yang wins, then Kim will become the same as those spectators whom Yang corrected. But if Kim wins, then Yang will have to come to school in a female school uniform. Yang looked at Kim and thought that he had met himself from the past, after which he accepted such conditions. Kim attacked Yang with the words that for Yang he perceived his punishment as a reward, since he agreed so easily. However, Yang said that he doesn't care at all, and the main thing for him is simply not to lose in this battle. After this, Yang tried to hit Kim with his knee in order to neutralize him as effectively as possible. A few hits later, Kim and Yang stood up again and started talking to each other. Suddenly Yang told Kim that he reminded him very much of him in his youth, and therefore he wanted to guide Kim on the right path even more, but Kim did not understand what Yang was telling him. Ian said that a few years ago he also drank a lot, smoked, fought with other guys, rode around the city on a motorcycle, and he absolutely did not care about anything else. However, one day Ian felt that his lifestyle was making him more and more disgusted with himself every day, and it was then that he realized that it was time for him to change and become more mature. That day, Ian was drinking with his friends on the playground as usual, and his friends began to notice that Ian was becoming something different. One of Ian's friends said that today he almost got into a fight with his younger brother, who was in junior school. This friend said that last night his younger brother asked him to help with his homework, and since everything was easy, he quickly helped him, and the next day the younger brother came home and told him that all his answers were wrong, after which he called him a fool. Then Ian became interested in what problems he had solved, and after looking at the really easy problems, he told his friend that his brother was right, and that he really was a rare idiot. Ian said that in fact all the answers here were wrong, and the friends began to argue with Ian. Ian said that the answer to one of the examples would be six to which his friends replied that the correct answer would be eight. Then the friends decided that they should teach Ian a lesson not to stand out when he makes such erroneous conclusions, and then Ian's friends threw a live frog into his beer mug, after which they forced him to completely drink the entire contents of his mug. It was at this moment that Ian realized that if he continued to behave this way, his life would not get better, and then he completely abandoned all his bad habits of the past, and his undeveloped social circle. Kim listened to Ian carefully and thought only about what the beer tasted like with a live frog swimming in it. Then Yang told Kim that if he didn't put in his efforts, he wouldn't achieve anything in life, and that Kim had every chance to improve in his first year of study. But Kim was already tired of all this chatter, and he couldn't wait to continue their fight. Yan immediately realized that Kim was unlikely to want to immediately understand everything that he had just told him. Then Yan decided to stop talking and give Kim a couple of serious blows. However, Kim not only managed to dodge Ian's blows, but at the same time deal him a heavy blow to the stomach, from which Ian immediately fell to the ground. Next, Kim was going to trample the prone Ian on the spot but he manages to dodge such an attack in time. Kim said he realized that Yang had pulled himself together and changed his lifestyle, after which he asked Yang why he didn't just change schools and study there. Yang said that he initially thought about changing schools, but then he thought that he didn't need it when he could fit Junsio into his lifestyle. Yang added that he wanted more to create his own learning atmosphere at school by dealing with all the bullies in the school. Yang also wanted to give all these bullies a second chance to get on the right path with him, 
as a result of which he'd beat the crap out of them that was in their heads and forced them to study well enough that each of them could after school to get to university. Meanwhile, Lee tried to see how the fight between Kim and Yang was going. When Siho and Sohee wanted to ask Lee what was going on, Lee said that Kim almost defeated Yang. Lee, Siho and Sohee were unable to enter the wasteland area due to the fact that at all possible passage points there were Yang's reformed bullies through whom they could not pass. So he said that she and Siho couldn't hang on the wall like Lee, and Siho added that if there was any hole or crack in the wall, they could look at the Adraka. Then Lee came down from the wall and said that she could make a hole in the wall for them. Siho asked Lee how she planned to make a hole in the wall, to which she replied that she would simply break through the wall, which scared Suhi very much, since they could be caught right away. Then Lee prepared to hit the wall and in less than a second a large hole appeared in the wall. Kim kept hearing from Ian how he gave all these bullies a second chance, and how this educational gesture changed the lives of each bully for the better. Then, in confirmation of Ian's words, the reformed hooligans said that their parents were actually pleased with such changes. To refute Yang's words, Kim told him that Dong Seek recently slapped one of the first grade students. Yang could not believe what he heard from which Kim concluded that Yang did not know about this incident. Then Kim decided not to stop, and decided to tell him another incident that happened to him a few days ago. One day, Kim was walking down the hallway and accidentally bumped shoulders with Choi Kyusop's seal, who was in his second year of study. Then, a couple of seconds later, Kyusop's seal hit him in the face with all his might without warning, causing Kim to fall to the floor. Kim understood perfectly well that that time Kyusop's seal deliberately ran into conflict, and provoked another fight. Then Kim suggested that Yang also did not know about this incident, because if he had known about this situation, he would have immediately started re-educating him, and there were many more such hooligans at Junso's school. Kim told Yang that the two are the type of bullies who pretend to be weak in front of people like Yang and act very differently in front of weak students who are unable to fight back, and Yang doesn't see in them the anger they hold back. Just in front of him, however, Despite all of Yang's attempts to rehabilitate such students, they were still bullies in front of other students. Then Kim wondered whether Yang could allow Yang to not know about such hooligans, since rumors about them were heard from everywhere, or whether he knew about everything and decided to simply allow such behavior from hooligans. However, in any case, Kim found it disgusting that Yang pretended that he was ready to do anything to ensure that the discipline of Junsio's school flourished. At that moment, all those reformed hooligans who were watching the fight suddenly felt ashamed that they had actually behaved like that at school. Kim called Jean a hypocrite and an idiot for only getting rid of bullies who only bother him and for only justifying his behavior as noble deeds. At first, Jan wanted to attack Kim again, but at that moment he was distracted by a loud sound from one of the walls of the wasteland. The reason for this loud sound was that Lee still managed to create a small hole in the wall through which she, Siho, and so he could watch the fight. Ian looked away from the conversation and was shocked that some girl could break through a concrete wall so easily. Kim decided to take advantage of his opponent's inattention and hit Yang in the face as hard as possible. During the strike, Kim did not forget to humiliate Ian in every possible way, calling him trash and an idiot. After a few seconds, Yang concentrated on the fight and continued to flinch from Kim's attacks and try to injure him. Meanwhile, the girls watched the fight and were surprised by the blows Kim and Ian were trying to throw at each other. Lee noticed that Kim was now in serious condition, and that he was trying to fight back against Yang, from which she concluded that Kim was an ordinary masochist. While Kim and Yang were punching each other, Lee shouted at Kim that he had fully lived up to her expectations of him being a bad fighter, after which she called him a yellow-haired anchovy. Yang then stopped hitting Kim again and started making fun of Lee for calling Kim a yellow-haired anchovy. Then Kim decides to take advantage of the right moment again and attack his opponent as soon as possible, but this time Yang manages to block such a powerful blow. Despite his timely defense, Jan still had difficulty standing on his feet after such a technique. Then Kim is about to attack Ian as quickly as possible with a high kick to Ian's face, but Ian manages to trip Kim from which Kim immediately falls to the ground. After Kim fell to the ground, Yang was going to punch Yang in the face as quickly and as hard as possible before Kim could get to his feet. But despite his not very fortunate position, Kim was not at a loss and when Yang's face was close enough, he kicked him on the head with all his might, even though Yang also managed to punch him in the face. Lee watched the fight with all her interest and thought that she also wanted to join their fight. After such simultaneous blows, 
both fighters lay on the ground covered in bruises and wounds. However, after just a couple of seconds, Kim held Ian by the hair and mercilessly hit him in the face. Yan wasn't going to let him lose and come to school tomorrow in a girl's uniform. Then Yang also grabbed Kim by the hair and began punching him in the face with all his might. After a few seconds, Kim and Ian were exhausted and they stopped punching each other in the faces. Despite his lack of strength, Kim was not going to stop, and he wanted to continue beating Ian. But suddenly he felt someone grab his clothes. When Kim turned around, he saw the face of Yung Sihian in front of him, who wanted to stop this fight. Chan raised Kim to his feet and told him that he should not have agreed to the fight, to which Kim himself, with all his tenacity, said that even so he was able to defeat him. The girls were surprised how Chan so easily came to the wasteland in order to take the exhausted Kim home to his sister. When Chan carried his friend's body outside the vacant lot, he noticed the girls and told them that they should go home right now since this place might be too dangerous for them. Then Lee wanted to know what Chan's condition was now, to which Chan replied that Kim would be fine. After that, Siho approached Yung and asked him why he came here, to which Yung replied that he was here to pick up Kim before he got more bruises again. From Chan's words, Lee assumed that this was not the first time Kim had fought, and Chan told her that back in middle school, Kim had repeatedly participated in similar fights, and each time Chan looked after Kim. At the time, Lee didn't understand whether Chan was too kind or just a simpleton, to which Chan said that he was just doing what any friend would do in his place. Lee looked at Chan and thought that Kim was surrounded by very good people. The next day, Kim came to school with a bunch of bruises, wounds and bandages, and he told his friends in great detail how his fight with Yan yesterday went, saying about him that it was one of his easiest and most boring fights. Kim also said that since Yan was defeated in yesterday's fight, Today he would have to come in a female school uniform, and Kim sat near the window and waited for Yang to come to school. On this day, one of the teachers stood near the entrance through which he let students into the school. The teacher was shocked when he saw Yang approaching the school in a girl's school uniform. The teacher was furious, and he couldn't find the words to describe how furious he was with Ian for coming to school in a girl's uniform. Then Ian also started shouting at the teacher telling him that he himself was not happy that he had come in a woman's uniform today. At that moment, the director appeared in front of Yang and the teacher, who said that there was nothing wrong with Yang coming today in a female uniform. All the students went to the window and were surprised that Yang actually came to school in a women's uniform. After this, Kim told Lee that he also wants to fight her soon. However, Lee interrupted Kim and said that her father told her not to communicate with him anymore and this news greatly surprised Kim. Last night, Lee, Siho and Sohee were happily discussing the fight between Kim and Yang. At one point, Siho said that it was already late, and that her father would be angry with her for staying out so late. Then Sohee also remembered that today she did not warn her mother that she would come home later today, after which Siho and Sohee asked Lee if everything would be fine with her when she came home. However, Lee no longer listened to the girls, and she was terrified of what would happen to her when she returned home. Then Lee decided to return home as quickly as possible, so as not to receive any severe punishment from her parents. However, Lee believed that her parents would definitely pay attention to the fact that she came home so late, and she decided to get home through the window, climbing up the wall of the house several floors. When Lee got home, she thought about how she could best behave so that her parents would believe that she had long since come home. However, Lee noticed that when she successfully got home, her younger brother was standing in front of her. Lee asked Hanbyul if her parents were home, and when Hanbyul replied that her parents were home, she asked her little brother to help her pretend that she had been home for a long time. Lee didn't even have time to finish speaking when Hanbyul immediately started calling for his father and Lee had no choice but to hit his brother in the face. A few minutes later, Lee held her hands up as she served her punishment for coming home so late and for hitting her little brother. Lee kept her arms raised for so long that over time she began to let her arms drop slightly out of fatigue, prompting her father to tell her to straighten her arms. After this, Lee's father scolded her for returning home so late, since her father had repeatedly told her that with the onset of darkness, various monsters began to appear on the street which could pose some kind of threat to life. Meanwhile, Hanbyul watched with a broken nose as his father scolded his older sister for being disobedient. Her father said that Lee was too young to be walking outside at such a late hour, and that while she lived in this house, she must follow all her father's rules. Then Lee would look at her father with her look of sympathy, 
so that her father would feel at least a little sorry for her and tell her to put her hands down. At first, the father realized that now Lee was simply trying to push for pity, but after a few seconds he allowed his daughter to give up. The father told his daughter that from now on she must return home on time, and the younger brother looked at this and did not understand how Lee could get off so easily. Lee was about to get up and go, but her father stopped her and told her that he wanted to ask her why she came home so late. Lee stood up and said that she was just walking outside with Siho and Suhi and watching Kim act like a small and stupid child. Then the father again got angry with his daughter and told her not to communicate with Kim anymore, since because of him Lee could become a bandit like Kim, and he added that if he found out that she was walking with him, then he would does not answer himself. Lee did not argue with her father and she said that she would no longer have any contact with Kim. They explained to Kim that they now had to have fun together without her father finding out. Then Kim asked Lee why she was talking to him, since it would be the end for both of them if her father found out about it. Lee said that they just had to be careful because even though Kim annoyed her a lot, she still thought he was a pretty funny guy and that's why she liked hanging out with him. Kim was very pleased that Lee saw him as a good person and said that he also enjoyed spending time with her. At this time, Yam walked along the corridor towards the class where Kim studies to show him that he came today in a girl's school uniform. Ian felt a deep sense of humiliation and disgust for himself and his actions, which he had never felt as strongly as today. Ian did not deceive himself, and he knew about all the things that the school bullies did, to which he simply turned a blind eye. Yam used to think that in order to teach bullies a lesson and correct their behavior, he could simply use violent methods such as beating them. And Yang still thinks so, but completely reforming these bullies would require a lot of effort, which Yang was too weak for. Yang also thought that during the fight Kim called him a hypocrite, and that Yang could not answer him anything about this and somehow refute his words, since he believed that what Kim told him was the absolute truth. Then Ian came to the conclusion that he must change, well, other people who surround him, and himself in order to become better and first he needs to focus his attention on preparing for the upcoming exams. When Yam walked into the office where Kim was studying, he saw Kim fooling around with Lee. Yam didn't pay attention to what Kim and Lee were doing, and he said that he came here to show Kim that he, as promised, came to school today in a girl's school uniform. Kim remembered that now Yam would come to him every morning to show him that Yam came in a girl's school uniform, which caused Kim a slight feeling of shame while Lee looked at Yang's legs and thought that Yang's legs much more beautiful than her legs. Then Kim suggested that Yang no longer come to school in a skirt, and just forget about it, to which Yang said that such sympathy only irritated him more. Yang also said that he would accept and suffer punishment for his hypocrisy with full responsibility, and in turn, Lee was very impressed by Yang's thinking. After that, Ian left the office and said that now he would come here every morning and show that he came in a girl's school uniform and after a while, Ian received a new nickname, Skirt of Remorse. One day, while Kim and Lee were at school, it started to rain heavily outside. Even though the rain started so suddenly, Kim had an umbrella with him, which his sister told him to take with him, while Lee did not have an umbrella with him. Kim looked at Lee's upset face, and he guessed that she had forgotten her umbrella today. Kim then began to mock Lee for not taking her umbrella to which Lee threateningly asked how he knew that. Kim just continued to laugh at Lee's unpredictability as his opponent, to which Lee said that Kim was an idiot for considering her his opponent. Then Kim said that he was ready to give her his umbrella if she could defeat him in the next competition. Lee was very angry that Kim couldn't give her an umbrella just like that, and that he once again wanted to fight her. Kim then told her that he was in no way forcing her to participate in the competition and that she could go home in wet clothes. Such a statement only angered Lee more, and in the end she decided to defeat Kim in a palm fight. In palm wrestling, the winner is the one who can quickly knock down the opponent using palm clapping, or if, while trying to clap, one of the players himself loses his balance and falls. However, during the competition, Kim didn't even have time to clap before Lee had already knocked him down, and as a result, Lee got the opportunity to use the umbrella. While Lee walked home under an umbrella, Kim completely refused to go under the umbrella and was not even in a hurry to return home as quickly as possible so as not to get too wet. Then at one point Lee suggested that Kim stand under the umbrella, since they both would still have to walk in the same direction if he agreed to carry the umbrella instead of her. At first, Kim completely refused to go under the umbrella, 
but in the end he decided to go under the umbrella with Lee. Lee looked at Kim and thought that despite all her irritability, Kim could also sometimes show some positive emotions. After this, Lee noticed that something was wrong with Kim, and she asked him if his right shoulder was okay. At first, Kim did not understand what exactly Lee meant, and only then did he notice that his shoulder had been caught in the rain and was soaked through. While Kim and Lee were walking down the street under an umbrella, Lee noticed a small sick kitten on the road. When Kim noticed the kitten, he began to be very moved by him and talk about how cute he was. However, after just a second, Kim immediately changed his emotional mood and pretended that he absolutely didn't care about this kitten. Lee couldn't bear to watch this cute creature suffer on the street, and then, without words, she was able to convince Kim to take the kitten with him. In less than a minute, Kim was carrying a small, hungry and helpless kitten in his arms, pretending that he had not said anything about this kitten. Lee became interested in what Kim was going to do with the kitten, to which he replied that he would take him to live with him for a while after which he would feed him, cure him and release him back onto the street, since he could not leave him because that his sister was allergic to cats. Then Lee asked him if he was allergic, and as soon as he wanted to answer, he immediately began to sneeze loudly and frequently, from which Lee concluded that Kim was also allergic to cats. Then Lee offered to leave the kitten with her, promising to take good care of it. At first Kim was a little upset that he wouldn't be able to keep the kitten, but then he thought it would be best for everyone if he gave the kitten to Lee, after which he gave her the kitten and went home. As soon as Lee returned home, she immediately asked her family not to scold her and to let her leave the kitten with them for a while. However, Lee's family not only did not reprimand Lee for bringing home a stray kitten, but even began to be touched by him, and as a result, the whole family unanimously decided to keep the kitten. Then the family immediately began to come up with a name for the kitten, and everyone decided to name the kitten Ronnie Coleman in honor of the professional, an outstanding athlete. Two weeks passed from that moment, Lee got a kitten, and Kim again began to stare at Lee with his terrifying gaze. Lee immediately became furious, and said that she was already tired of the fact that Kim still could not stop looking at her from the very beginning of the school year. However, Kim began questioning Lee about when she would finally return his umbrella to him since two weeks had already passed since she took his umbrella. Then Lee apologized to Kim and invited him to go to her house so that he could collect his umbrella, and from such an offer Kim began to get even angrier, since Lee had to bring him his umbrella herself. Then Lee said that Kim could look at the kitten they picked up that day, and how this kitten managed to grow up during the time he lived at her house. Then Kim's emotional mood immediately changed and he remembered the kitten that Lee had picked up on that rainy day. After this, Lee was approached by one of her classmates who wanted to know if she had a kitten, and Lee wanted to explain to her classmate how she got a kitten. However, the classmate no longer listened to Lee and believed that she wanted to invite Kim to her home in order to engage in some various indecencies. This classmate was so deep in thought that he didn't even have time to react when Lee hit him in the stomach with all her might for starting to imagine various bad things. While the classmate was lying on the floor in serious condition, Lee told Kim that this kitten had grown up very quickly during the time he lived with her due to the fact that this kitten eats very well and eats a lot. After class, Kim went with Lee to her house so that Kim could look at the kitten and get his umbrella back. Once at home, Lee told Kim that while she was changing clothes, he could play with Roni. Then Kim thought that if you called the kitten by name, he would definitely come running to him, after which he quietly called Roni to him. However, when Roni ran to Kim, Kim saw in front of him not a small and emaciated kitten, but a large and creepy cat in comparison with which any dog could seem like a harmless puppy. Kim was very surprised and at the same time confused by how in two weeks the kitten in this family had changed so much. When the Lee family adopted the kitten, everyone immediately began feeding it special cat food. Then Hanbyo proposed to everyone the idea of adding special nutritional supplements to cat food for muscle growth, and all family members approved of this option of feeding the kitten which is why such a small kitten turned into a mountain of muscles in a matter of days. It was at that moment that Kim realized what Lee was telling him when she told him how much the kitten had grown. At that moment, Kim heard someone outside opening the apartment door, and then Kim thought that if one of Lee's relatives saw him here, he would be finished. In a panic, Kim began to think about where it would be better for him to hide, since no one had found him. However, it was already late, and Handiel, who had just returned home from school, entered the apartment. Then Kim, in a panic, decides to simply hide his face under his shirt, 
hoping that Hanbyul won't recognize him. However, Hanbyul immediately recognized the same yellow-haired anchovy that he saw with Lee, and after that he wanted to finish off Kim, but Kim manages to dodge in time. Even though Kim was able to dodge, he was unable to return to his normal position, causing him to grab Hanbyul's beard to avoid falling to the floor. Lee heard loud screams and quickly found out what happened. However, when Lee walked out into the hallway, she saw her little brother and Kim in a somewhat awkward position. Then Lee didn't understand since when Hanbyul and Kim had such a close relationship, and Kim and Hanbyul tried to explain to Lee that this was not what she was thinking about now. At that moment, someone else was heard opening the apartment door, and the father had already entered the apartment. When the father entered the apartment, he saw the yellow-haired anchovy lying on the floor under Hanbyul. Then the father was furious with what he saw, and everyone around understood that most likely this would not end well. Immediately after my father, my mother entered the apartment and hit my father on the head for swearing in front of the children. Then the father calmed down a little and asked Lee, who herself did not fully understand what was happening here, why Kim was at their house. Then L.I. said that now she also doesn't understand anything what's going on here, and this scared Kim a little that she couldn't really explain anything and he decides to try to explain everything to her father on his own. After a short explanation, Father Lee concluded that Kim had broken into their house to look at the kitten. Kim said that he did not do anything strange in their house, after which he planned to leave their house. However, before Kim left the apartment, Lee's mother suggested that he first eat a little before Kim went home, and neither Kim nor Lee's father liked this outcome. Then Kim tried to explain as politely and clearly as possible that there would be no need to cook food for him either and Father Lee supported Kim's words, hoping that he would leave the apartment as quickly as possible. Kim also added that his older sister is waiting for him at home, who is probably already worried that her brother has not returned home for so long. As a result, after several unsuccessful attempts to leave the house as soon as possible, Kim still had to stay for a family dinner. Then Lee asked Kim why he still stayed for the family dinner, to which Kim said that it would be somehow indecent when he was shown hospitality and he refused. Meanwhile, the father was thinking about why Kim didn't immediately leave their house, to which Kim replied that he was pretty tired of being bullied. The atmosphere of the family feast became so tense and restless that Lee began to have trouble breathing. A few minutes later, Lee's mother served everyone dinner, which contained a lot of protein and did not look very appetizing, and at that moment Kim realized that it would be better for him to leave this house immediately. While eating, Father Lee asked Kim his name since he still didn't know his real name, and Kim introduced himself to Father Lee as Kim Wojum. Then Father Lee repeated Kim Ojum to himself, and said that despite his appearance, he had a very masculine name. Kim then corrected Father Lee and said that he was Kim Wujun, to which the father said that there was no difference, and Kim said that both options were not only wrong, but equally terrible. Then Father Lee became angry because he did not understand how to address Kim. During the conversation, Hanbyul threw a chicken breast towards Kim, which immediately ended up in Kim's mouth. Lee immediately began to scold her little brother because she had already told him many times not to throw food. At this moment, Kim and Father Lee looked at each other and thought that they both did not like each other. Kim decided that he shouldn't linger in this house and decides to just eat this dinner as soon as possible. However, when Kim tried to lift the spoon, he noticed that it was too heavy. Father Lee looked at Kim and thought that Kim was too weak to even eat in this house, since in this family, even the clothes of each family member weighed at least 5 kilograms. Father Lee also expected that such a situation would cause Kim to feel disappointment and self-hatred. Kim watched as Lee not only picked up her spoon with ease, but also calmly ate her food. Then Kim believed that Lee had an ordinary spoon, and to confirm his theory, he asked Lee to give him his spoon. The father looked at Kim's behavior and became incredibly furious as he watched Kim and Lee. Lee's father felt that Kim wanted to give his daughter an indirect kiss right in front of him. In his father's eyes, Lee Kim looked like a psychopath who liked to have fun with girls, drink, smoke, do drugs, and kill people. When Kim took Lee's spoon in his other hand, he noticed that both of these spoons weighed exactly the same. Then Kim began to look at the spoons in the hope of understanding what material they were made of. Father Lee imagined Kim pulling Lee's spoon towards his mouth and starting to lick it like the last pervert, and this angered Father Lee even more. Father Lee did not hold back his emotions and decided to hit Kim with all his might, but Kim manages to dodge the blow. Lee watched as her enraged father tried to finish off the frightened Kim. In the end, 
Li not only breaks down and begins to freak out due to her father's unacceptable behavior, Li immediately grabbed Kim by the neck and went outside to see Kim off. From this act, Li's father did not continue to be angry because of the behavior of his daughter, who did not give him the opportunity to finish off Kim. A minute later, angry at her father, Li stood in front of the front door, still holding Kim by his clothes. When Li let Kim go, Kim told her that her father had acted very rudely towards him. However, Li did not listen to Kim, and she simply stood facing the door, thinking about something very important to her. A couple of minutes later, Li went down with Kim to the street to see him off. Kim said that it was not necessary for Li to accompany him, to which she said that it was not difficult for her, and that she was going to go outside anyway to get some fresh air. After that, a little frightened Kim said goodbye to Li and headed home, feeling a sense of embarrassment and shame in front of Li. After Kim left, Li sat on the stairs and thought about how ashamed she was of her father's behavior. Meanwhile, three guys were walking down the street, discussing together the topic of their unsuccessful football game today. When the guys passed by a residential building, one of the guys named Yung Hosa saw Li and could not take his eyes off her. The rest of the guys tried to shout to the guy so that he would focus on the conversation again, but he was too carried away by Li's appearance. Soon, the embarrassed Hosu was able to take his eyes off Li and turn his attention to his friends. At this moment, one of Hosu's friends also noticed Li sitting on the stairs. Hosu thought that his friend and Li knew each other, but his friend said that they did not know each other personally, and one of his friends, Rodan, who was also a student at Junseo High School, told him about her. Hosu's friend also noticed that Li looked completely different from what his friends told him suggesting that Lee was just a little out of shape at the moment. After this, Hosu's friend suggested continuing to talk about football, but Hosu himself demanded from his friend some more information about Lee. Hosu's friends were surprised by this demand, to which he said that he was just interested. Despite such a naive attempt by Hosu to justify himself, they immediately realized that Hosu simply fell in love. Then one of Hosu's friends told him that his sister was studying at the same school and he could learn something else from her. Hosu immediately rushed home to find out more about Lee from his sister as soon as possible. A couple of minutes later, Hosu was already at home, and the first thing he did was ask his older sister Sabine what she knew about Lee. Sabine didn't understand why her little brother was so interested in Lee and Hosa said that his bullies from Junsio's school often talk about her. Sabine said that she knows a little about Lee, since recently there has been a lot of talk about how Kim Wujun is running after Lee. Hosu was immediately afraid that Lee already had some boyfriend at school. However, Hosu immediately calmed down as Sabine said that Kim did not have any interest in Lee as a girl. Then Hosu asked Sabine what else she knew about L, and she remembered one recent incident from school. That day, Sabine remembered how she told her friends how one of the boys from Hosa's school confessed his feelings to her. Her friends were very interested in who this guy was, and Sabine started looking for photographs of this guy. Sabine showed her friends the photo and said that she wasn't interested in younger guys, so they told her and hand by all, telling her that he looked very mature for his age. Then Sabine told Hosa that his younger brother Lee was studying with him in a parallel class. The next day at school, Hosa still couldn't concentrate on anything and his friends decided that he had simply started consuming something forbidden. However, in reality, Hosu just couldn't stop thinking about Lee, and all he wanted was to see her in person. At the next break, Hosu wanted Handil to talk to him about the possibility of meeting Lee. On the way, Hosu asked one of the kids what class Handil was in, and he pointed him to the fifth room. Finding himself near the fifth office, Hosu tried to imagine what Hanbyul might look like. Hosu remembered his sister's words about how Hanbyul looked very mature, and he imagined in his head the image of a handsome and educated guy who should be liked by all the girls in school. Then Hosu began to worry that if Hanbyul really looked like this, then Lee would hardly be able to see him as a man. But despite this, Hosu, due to his childish naivety, counted on the fact that he would not give up under any circumstances and would do his best to achieve a meeting with Lee. At that moment, one of the guys passing by looked at Hosu and thought that he was crazy. Hosu happened to see this guy and asked where Hanbyul was now, and this guy pointed Hosu to the place where Hanbyul was sitting at that moment. Then Hosu saw a menacing and pumped-up man who was literally sitting in the air, while the desk was simply hanging on his feet. Hosu thought that this guy decided to joke with him, after which he was going to hit the guy for such a bad joke. Hosu couldn't believe that this pumped-up pile of muscles was Hanbyul 
because this hump didn't even look like a high school student. Hanbyul overheard his classmate's conversation with Hosu and turned to Hosu to find out what he needed from him. When Hanbyul approached Hosu, he wanted to see if he really was Lee's younger brother, and Hanbyul confirmed his guess. Hosu then approached Hanbyul even closer and asked him to introduce him to his older sister. However, contrary to Hosu's expectations, Hanbyul thought for a moment and said that he would not do it. Hosu didn't understand why Hanbyul refused to help him and Hanbyul's classmate said that it was no surprise that he didn't even know him and was already asking for such a favor. Hanbyul said that his classmate was right and that he couldn't just introduce his beloved sister to some stranger. However, Hanbyul said that he would think about this request if Hosu gave him 500 grams of protein, and then Hosu offered him a whole box of protein. At this moment, Hosu and Hanbyul managed to conclude a lucrative contract with each other, in which everyone will benefit. The next day, Hanbyul and Hosu met near the school where Hanbyul expected to see his protein. Then Hosu showed a whole box with a bunch of bags filled with protein nutritional supplement. Hanbyul was a little annoyed that Hosu brought vanilla-flavored protein since he preferred chocolate-flavored protein. After that, Hanbyul took out a small knife and pierced one of the protein bags to evaluate its quality by taste. Even though Hanbyul was not satisfied with the taste of the protein, he was still happy with the quality of the protein but he said that the volume was a little small. Hosu then reminded Hanbyul that they were just schoolchildren who, due to finances, could not afford to buy protein in such large quantities. Then Hosu began to accuse Hanbyul of not knowing how to run a business and follow the terms of their contract. In response, Hanbyul said that not only did Hosu Dal prepare a protein for him with his least favorite flavor, but the volume of protein was small, and if he did not receive a few more packages, he would cancel their contract. Hosu said that if the contract is invalid, then only Hanbyul will be the loser. After that, Hosu and Hanbyul started haggling over how many more protein packets Hosu should give Hanbyul. And while Hanbyul demanded seven more packets, Hosu insisted on five packets. After a couple of minutes of bargaining, Hanbyul and Hosu agreed on six more bags of protein. And in the meantime, Hanbyul will try to find out from his sister her ideal type of guy. After school, Hanbyul was going to talk to his sister, but he had not yet had time to say anything, and Lee had already begun to refuse him, hoping that now her younger brother would try to take the TV remote control away from her in order to turn on cartoons on TV. However, Hanbyul said that this is not what he was here for and that he wanted to have a serious talk with his older sister, after which Lee immediately calmed down. Hanbyul directly asked his sister if she had an ideal type of guy, and in response, his sister pointed her finger at the TV. The TV was showing a program about various celebrities, and one of the famous music artists was on the screen. Lee said that she likes tall and reasonably muscular guys with kind eyes and a smile. Lee also added that she can't stand guys who act like tough and dangerous bullies, because she believed that, first of all, a guy should be kind. At this time, Kim was walking with his friend, and his ear suddenly itched indicating that someone was discussing him. Then Hanbyul thought that Kim and Hosu had a lot in common both in physique and character. Hanbyul asked his sister to accept feelings of sympathy from Hosu, and Lee immediately demanded not to say such things to her again. Meanwhile, Kim's ear began to itch more and more, and he did not understand who was talking so much about him. Then Hanbyul compared the image of Hosu in his head with the image of the ideal guy for Lee and he realized that guys like Hosu definitely could not please his sister. Hanbyul also understood that if his sister didn't like Hosu, then he would have to return all the protein he had previously received. The next day, Hanbyul met Hosu at school and told him that his sister likes tall and kind guys with handsome eyes and a sweet smile, and that Hosu is the complete opposite of that type of guy. However, Hosu said with all confidence that he fits the bill perfectly and therefore he is perfect for Lee. At that moment, the boy whom Hosu constantly mocked ran up to Hosu to give him the bun that he asked to buy. However, when Hosu started scolding the guy for not buying him banana milk, Hanbyul only became more convinced that Hosu was definitely not the kind of guy his sister might like. The frightened boy said that he wanted to buy Hosu banana milk, but not only did he not have enough money, but the buffet had also run out of it. Josu was not at all happy with what the boy said to him and without warning he punched him in the face. Hosu also told the boy that he could buy him something to drink with his own money, and Hanbyul was becoming more and more convinced with each passing second that his sister would definitely not like a guy like Hosu. While the guy was leaving, Hosu shouted to him that he had a lot of experience as an errand boy, 
and this statement made one of the students laugh very much. Then, angry with Hosu, Hanbyo left him and told him that from now on their contract was terminated. Hosu said that in that case, Hanbyo should return to him all the protein that he received. But Hanbyo said that he had already eaten all the protein and he would return everything to him in money. Hosu then blocked Hanbyo's path further and said that he couldn't lose all his trust in him just because he was having so much fun with his friends. However, Hanbyo said that he didn't have any trust in Hosu from the very beginning, and that before that he just thought of Hosu as an ordinary guy. But now Hanbyo saw him as another trash, after which he moved on. The last straw for Hosu was when Hanbyo told him that now he even felt sorry for introducing his sister to such a freak as Hosu. Hosu's friend saw that he was beside himself with anger, and he tried to calm his friend down a little. Out of excess emotion, Hosu took the nearest chair and threw it at Hanbyo with all his anger but Hanbyo himself didn't even fall. Everyone was shocked at how Hosu, without any fear, was able to find the courage to anger a man who was many times larger and ten times stronger than him. Still without any sense of fear, Hosu shouted at the enraged Hanbyo. Then Hosu's friends tried to stop their friend so that he would not commit another rash act. Then Hosu's friends began to persuade him to apologize to Hanbyo as quickly as possible, since he could easily sweat him like a fly. But this did not stop Hosu at all. Even though Hanbyo was very angry with Hosu, he still had no intention of hitting him. One day, Hanbyo's father told him that under no circumstances should he beat a person, since any careless blow from him could easily kill a person. Hosu continued to provoke Hanbyo into aggression, but Hanbyo said that he did not intend to use his strength for violence. Hosu was shocked by such restraint and stubbornness and he promised himself that he would definitely force him to fight him. For two weeks, Hosu tried various ways to anger Hanbyo and provoke him into a fight, but Hanbyo was still unshakable and restrained. Hosu's friends were surprised at how Hosu kept trying to piss off the strongest guy in school. Hosu went so far as to annoy Hanbyo that he even braided two pigtails in Hanbyo's beard. But Hanbyo didn't care about that either. Every day Hosu's anger at Hanbyo grew more and more and his provocations became more and more cruel and flawed. But all this time Hanbyo was as impenetrable in both body and spirit. After four weeks, Hosu and his friends were smoking on the roof of the school, and any minute their lesson was supposed to start, and at first they were going to skip class. But the teacher was very picky and strict. Then the guys immediately put out their cigarettes on Hanbyo's body, who wasn't even in pain. One of the friends was shocked that Hosu and several other guys were so fearlessly putting out their cigarettes on Hanbyo. However, Hosu said that Hanbyo even likes it when they do this to him. Then Hosu again began to persuade Hanbyo to fight him, but Hanbyo himself repeatedly said that he would not use force. After class, Hosu sat on Hanbyo's shoulders to take him home. After a couple of minutes of such skating, Hosu saw Lee in the distance and he was afraid that she would now see him in this position. Then Hosu immediately jumped off Hanbyo so that Lee would not think that he was somehow mocking her younger brother. His friends were somewhat surprised that Hosu got down so quickly, but he told his friends to be as quiet as possible. Hosu also told all his friends and Hanbyo to move to one of the alleys as soon as possible. When everyone hid in the alley, Hosu said that he saw Lee and he was going to take this opportunity to talk to her. Hosu also asked Hanbyo to pretend to be his friend so that he would have a better chance of getting Lee to like him. A minute later, Lee saw Hanbyo in the distance walking down the street with several guys, and at first glance it seemed that Hanbyo was actually friends with these guys. Once near Lee, Hosu immediately pretended that he was seeing Hanbyo's older sister for the first time. However, Lee told Hosu that she didn't know him and Hosu introduced himself to her as Hanbyo's best friend, and that Hanbyo had told him a lot about his older sister. Hanbyo could only watch as Hosu blatantly lied to his older sister. Hosu kept telling Lee that she was very beautiful, and how he envied Hanbyo that he had such an older sister. At one point, Lee interrupted Hosu and said that he had very beautiful hands, after which she took his hand. Lee said that Hosu's hands were as beautiful and delicate as a girl's and at first glance it seemed that everything was fine. However, at one point, Lee began to squeeze Hosu's hand very tightly, which caused him great pain. Lee then stepped on Hosu's foot, grabbed his neck and asked if they were bullying her little brother. Hosu and his friends were shocked that Lee found out that they all bullied Hanbyo together. Without waiting for an answer, Lee grabbed Hosu even tighter and did not let him go until he answered. Then Lee began to threaten Hosu and said that if he didn't tell her the whole truth right now, he would face severe punishment. In an attempt to somehow avoid his fate, 
Hosu pretended that he did not understand what Lee was telling him. Seeing how Hosu was brazenly lying to Lee's face, she only grabbed his shoulder even harder. Then Hosu's friends started telling Lee that there was some misunderstanding between them and that they were actually good friends with Hanbiel. Then Lee looked at Hanbiel and pointed out to the guys his braids on his beard and traces of cigarette ash given the fact that he is not friends with people who smoke. Then Hosu and his friends told Lee that they did not smoke any cigarettes at all, but Lee pointed out to them the smell of cigarettes that came from them. Then Lee told the guys that if they confessed, the punishment would be much less severe. Then one of Hosu's friends approached Lee and said that she just thought that the smell was coming from them, and that she was blaming them without any solid evidence. Then Lee said that if she found cigarettes on them, it would be very bad for all of them. Hosu's friend said that if Lee continued to hold Hosu's shoulder, she would not be able to prove that he had cigarettes in his backpack, and Lee reluctantly let Hosu go. When Lee removed her hand from Hosu, his friend immediately decided to take the opportunity to escape. However, Lee manages to grab Hosu's friend by the backpack and throw him to the ground, preventing him from escaping. When Hosu's friend found himself lying down on the ground, Lee told him to show him his backpack hoping to find cigarettes there. A few seconds later, Lee took a pack of cigarettes from Hosu's friend's backpack, and all Hosu's friends and he himself understood that they were doomed. After this, Lee turned to Hanbiel and asked him to tell the whole truth without fear of any consequences. Lee also told Hanbiel that no matter what happens, she will definitely side with her younger brother and stand up for him. At this moment, Hanbiel tearfully told his older sister that these guys had really bullied him for a long time. Hearing Hanbiel's words, Lee told Hosa that if he doesn't confess and apologize to Hanbiel right now, then she will find any evidence against him and finish him off. Hosa had no choice but to take off his backpack, show it to Lee and apologize to Hanbiel for his behavior, which he did. Hosa returned home late in the evening and Sabine began to scold him for the fact that recently he began to come home so late more and more often. However, Sabine immediately stopped scolding Hosa when she saw that her little brother came home with bruises, contusions, and other injuries. At one point, Hosa simply could not stand it, and without any strength, he picked it up and fell to the floor, which greatly frightened her older sister. The next day, the school's students learned that it was time to prepare and take exams. Kim still invited Lee to compete with each other, but Lee did not pay any attention to him, since all her thoughts were only about the upcoming exams. When Kim finally realized that exams would be held soon, Lee asked her classmates to write some pleasant and encouraging words of encouragement to each other in their notebooks. Then all of Lee's classmates told her that instead of doing such nonsense, she would better start preparing as soon as possible. In response to this, Lee began to freak out a little, and eventually her classmates agreed to write words of encouragement to each other in their notebooks. Lee was surprised that the first person who wanted to write something in her notebook was Kim, but he wanted to write in her notebook that he wanted her to fall in the rankings. Lee still couldn't wait for everyone else to write something in her notebook, so that she could then read all the kind and pleasant words that her classmates left for her. At that moment, Sabine approached Kim and took Lee's notebook from him, not allowing him to finish writing. However, instead of writing something in Lee's notebook, she tore her notebook into small pieces. Sabine then turned to Lee and told her to leave the classroom to discuss something. Then Lee asked the evil Sabine why she tore her notebook, which is why all her positive attitude immediately disappeared. Then Sabin and her friends once again ordered Lee to leave the classroom and follow them. At that moment, Siho appeared recognizing Sabine as they had previously been in middle school together, and Siho said that in middle school, she also provoked people into conflict and caused general chaos in other classes. Then Sabine said that they were still in the same class. Siho was shocked by what she heard, since until that moment she had never noticed Sabin in her class. Kim then said that if Sabine wanted to start a fight with Lee, then the rest of the students might find out about it and Sabine said that this was the reason why she wanted Lee to follow her. Even though Lee wanted to start studying for her exams, she still knew that this situation was inevitable, so she still followed Sabine to get it over with as soon as possible. Once on the roof of the school, Sabina told Lee that she found out that last night Lee beat his younger brother Hosu. Then Sabine said that if Lee apologized to her brother on his knees, then everything would end quickly and without conflict. However, Lee said that she will not apologize to Hosu for beating him. Then Sabine's friends immediately began to demand from Lee that she follow all the instructions, but Lee did not listen to them. Sabine said that in this situation, Lee herself was to blame for everything from the very beginning, 
and she again said that Lee should apologize to Hosa anyway. However, Lee, in response to such statements, only showed Sabine her fist, showing her that Hosa would not expect any apology from her. This was the last straw for Sabine, and she became even more angry with Lee. Sabine then walked up to Lee and grabbed her by the hair, calling her names and telling her that if she had just apologized, it would have ended without a fight. However, Lee was not taken aback and grabbed Sabine by the neck, after which she kneed her in the stomach with all her might. From such severe pain, Sabine fell to the ground and grabbed her stomach, while Sabine's friends just stood aside and looked at Sabine in fear. Meanwhile, Lee's classmates stood outside the door and looked at how easily she neutralized Sabine. Kim said he thought Lee and Sabin would just grab each other's hair and start screaming. Lee told Sabine that Hosa was the first to bully Hambiel, who put up with his antics for a long time, and yesterday Hosa got what he deserved from her. Then Lee wanted to teach Sabine a lesson for breaking into her class, tearing up her notebook, pushing her onto the roof and starting to pull her hair. Last night, when Sabin was putting Hosa to bed, she tried to ask him who beat him, to which Hosa replied that he just fell. Sabine, of course, did not believe such a stupid and naive excuse. Hosa still continued to claim that he simply stumbled and stumbled badly, hiding the whole truth from his sister. Hosa was incredibly ashamed of being beaten so badly by the girl he was in love with. Meanwhile, Sabine continued her attempts to find out from Hosa the truth about how he got so badly injured. Then Sabine grabbed her younger brother in the hope that at least this way she could hear the whole truth from him. In the end, Hosa still couldn't stand it, and told Sabin the truth that he was beaten by Lee so young. Then Sabine promised that she would do everything to make Lee beg for forgiveness from Hosa on her knees. From such a strong blow, Sabine immediately began to cry loudly hoping that Lee would at least have a little mercy on her. Lee was somewhat confused by how a girl like Sabine, who a few minutes ago had been acting like a dangerous and tough girl, suddenly started crying like a little girl. Meanwhile, Sabine's friends began to calm her down and tell Lee what an angry and cruel girl she was. Lee then told Sabine's friends that it was her fault that she started the fight by grabbing her hair and pulling it with all her might. Kim remembered that Siho said that she had known Sabine since middle school. Siho said that in middle school, Sabine was known for constantly provoking everyone into conflict, and she would pick on both the regular students and the bullies. And one day Siho also came face to face with her. Two years ago, during their turn to clean the school, Siho asked Sabin and her friends not to leave while cleaning next time. But despite the fact that Siho very politely asked Sabine not to break the cleaning rules anymore, Sabine had no intention of taking this request seriously. Then Sabin said that if other girls with whom Siho had to clean the school also have such complaints, then let them come to her together and express all their complaints to her. Siho said that those girls left because they were all afraid of Sabine, and that's why only Siho came to her. Then Sabin began to attack Siho and asked her if those girls were afraid to approach her, then why Siho wasn't afraid. Then Sabine continued to attack Siho more and more and press her finger on her forehead in order to then hit her, which did not suit Siho very much. Sabine's friends started making fun of Siho and saying that they didn't like her from the very beginning. Sabine noticed that Siho had recently started using cosmetics, and she suspected that Siho was doing this on purpose, which would please Appa Kison even more, who already showed sympathy for Siho but Siho herself refuted this assumption in every possible way. Sabine then told Siho that if she really didn't care about Kison, then she should stop responding to his messages, and Siho said that she just didn't want to ignore someone like Kison. At one point, Sabine reminded Siho that Siho had no friends at all in elementary school, and Siho became as uncomfortable as possible remembering that time. After that, Sabine hit Siho on the forehead with her finger, and said that if she doesn't want to get herself into unnecessary trouble, then she should not stand out and know her place. At first, Siho almost cried because of the upholstery, but she remembered the words of Kim, who told her that she should not allow others to hurt her. Sabin and her friends were about to go home, but at one point Siho called Sabin. When Sabine turned around, she saw Siho running towards her, ready to punch her in the face. After such an unexpected blow, Sabine fell to the floor and began to cry while her friends tried to calm her down. While Sabine cried loudly from the intense pain, Siho laughed loudly because she finally had the courage to fight back for the first time. When Kim heard this story from Siho, he praised her for not allowing Sabin to continue to hurt her. At that moment, Kim heard someone climbing the stairs and walking towards them. Fearing that it might be the teacher, Kim, 
Siho, and the rest of the guys decided to hide as soon as possible. Sabine couldn't stop crying and told Lee that she specifically called Kison here so that he could easily rebuff her. When Kison climbed to the roof of the school, he saw Sabine upset and asked her what happened here. Sabine then pointed at Lee and told Kison that she had offended her and that he should deal with her. Kison was surprised at how such a seemingly harmless girl was able to injure Hosu and Sabine. In middle school, Sabine could not ask Kison to deal with Siho, since at that time he was in love with her, but now Sabine can ask him to deal with Lee. Kison approached Lee and said that if she didn't apologize to Sabin and Hosu right now, then he would have to use force to punish Lee. However, Kison didn't even have time to finish speaking before Lee kicked him in the stomach with all her might. Lee's blow was so strong that Kison could not stand on his feet after such a blow and immediately flew into the wall. After the blow, Lee reminded Sabine that she herself said that she wanted to pull herself together and live without conflicts. But in the end she called a bully to the roof who had the courage to threaten her. Kim, Siho and the rest of the guys who were watching were shocked by how strong Lee's punches were. Lee told Sabine that she wasn't surprised Sabine had such an evil brother if his older sister wasn't behaving any better, and then Lee set out to raise Sabine. Then Lee was already about to attack Sabine, and her desire to restore justice and teach Sabine a lesson could not be stopped. Sabine was even more frightened, and she thought that she simply would not survive this attack. However, instead of beating Sabine to a pulp, Lee began tickling her causing Sabine to start laughing hysterically. Lee said it didn't hit her in the stomach hard at all, and she was just pretending it hurt, and Sabine said she'd rather be killed than tickled. At that moment, Lee remembered how as a child she often played with Hanbyul, tickling him until he fell. Kim and the guys looked at what was happening and did not understand how cruel Lee could be if she could start tickling a person so easily. Lee then continued to tickle Sabine until she apologized and admitted her guilt. Kim looked at Lee and thought that each time he saw more and more brutal methods of Lee's fight against the enemy, because of which his image of the battle with her became more and more cloudy and implausible. While studying for exams, Kim wanted to ask Lee for a textbook again and the teacher didn't like the way Kim was wandering around the class without the teacher's permission, and the teacher told Kim to stand still for the rest of the lesson. When the lesson ended, Kim suggested that Lee and his friend go to the buffet during recess, and everyone agreed with this proposal. However, even before Kim, Lee and their friend had time to leave the classroom, Wu Jun came in to see them. Jun said that she was looking for Lee So Yun and that she wanted to talk to her about something. In the hallway, a couple of friends were discussing with each other how Lee So Yun was able to defeat Appa Ki Song, who had been fighting in middle school. At that moment, Jun passed by these guys and wanted to know where Lee So Yun was now. Jun figured that if these rumors were true, then she would be the right person for the job. However, Jun was somewhat embarrassed by the fact that Lee was much shorter than she expected. Jun asked Lee if it was true that she was able to defeat Appa Ki Song recently and Lee said that it was true. Jun then said that she would like to give Lee a little test to see if she would be a good match for her. Lee said that she didn't mind taking a quick test since she was in a hurry to get to the buffet. Lee wanted to ask Jun what this test was, but before she could finish speaking, Jun was about to attack Lee. Despite Jun's unexpected and fast attack, Lee still managed to dodge her. Just before Jun was about to hit Lee again, she deliberately stepped on Lee's foot so that she couldn't dodge anymore. Jun told Lee that it was time for her to stop dodging attacks, and that Lee should at least try to attack her too. However, even with her leg pinned down, Lee still manages to lean back strongly, thereby again avoiding the blow. While Lee remained in this position, she was able to stay on her feet and grab Jun's clothes. Also, Lee was able to not only return to her original position— but also hit Jun's foreheads with all her might. Lee's blow turned out to be so serious that Jun could not resist such a blow and fell to the floor, while Lee herself could continue to stand on her feet without any problems. However, Lee's blow was not strong enough to completely overpower Jun, and in less than a second she was able to get back to her feet. After that, Jun ran up to Lee and grabbed her, which scared Lee very much at first. However, this time Jun did not intend to attack Lee and she told her that she would join her in the sports club. Kim and Lee were surprised that Jun suggested this way to invite Lee to her sports club. At that moment, Lee became disgusted at the thought that Jun hadn't thought to just talk to her about joining the club. Jun looked at Lee and thought that she could not have achieved such a strong and resilient body with simple training, and Jun concluded that Lee had been involved in sports for a very long time. At the same time, Kim was surprised that Jun was very popular with the girls 
who at that very second brought her a handkerchief so that she could wipe her wounds. Li told Jun that she hasn't exercised for a long time. But Jun just couldn't believe it, and she assumed that Li was just a little shy. Then Jun was wondering how Li was able to achieve such large and strong muscles. Li said that she didn't even have any large muscles, and Kim and her friend didn't understand what Li meant. Li also added that she has always had such a body and that her body itself remembers the workouts that she did as a child. When Jun heard what Lee told her, she thought she was just joking. While Jun argued with Lee about how it was simply impossible to have such a body from birth, Kim remembered how much her family members had toned bodies, and he thought that Lee's strong body might actually be the result of genetics. At this point, an angry Lee told Jun that she simply hated sports, which is why she refused to join their sports club. At that moment, the school bell rang and Jun decides to interrupt the conversation with Lee until the next break. While Jun left the office, Lee could only think that because of Jun she never had time to go to the buffet. A few hours later, all classes were over at Jun Seo's school, and Lee was getting ready to go home and start studying for her exams. At first, Lee wanted to invite Kim to go home together, but at that moment Kim was going to go with Siho to study for the exam at a local cafe. In this situation, what surprised Lee most was that Kim himself decided to come to his senses and start preparing for the exams. Then Lee also thought that it would be better if she went to study for the exam in the school library. Just as Lee was about to leave the office, a heavy dumbbell flew towards her, which she managed to catch. As Lee later noted, this dumbbell was thrown at her by Jun, who again wanted to talk to Lee about her joining the sports club. Lee was very angry with Jun while she was telling someone that Lee really deserves to be in the sports club. Out of excess anger, Lee approached Jun and hit her on the head with all her might for daring to throw a dumbbell at her. Lee's blow was so strong that Jun suddenly lost consciousness and fell to the floor. Later, an unknown voice apologized to Lee because Jun showed her her bad manners. At that moment, Kim Cabin, who was the head of the sports club, appeared in front of Lee. The rest of the students looked at Cabin and didn't believe that he was even a high school student. At this point, Kim confused Cabin with Hanbyul, to which Lee replied that Hanbyul had dark hair, but Kim was still haunted by the thought that Cabin was still somewhat similar to Hanbyul. The other students were surprised that Lee's younger brother looked just like Cabin. Cabin apologized to Lee and said that he would like to talk to Lee for a while. Cabin said that Lee should join their sports club, and Lee felt that Cabin chose not the best way to apologize to the girl. Lee then told Cabin that she would never join their sports club, as she simply hated sports. Cabin told Lee that even if Lee didn't play sports, she still had a very strong and strong body. Cabin then imagined how strong Lee could become if she trained to her full potential. At this moment, Lee began to shout even more strongly to Cabin that she would not, under any circumstances, join their sports club. Then Cabin began to persuade Lee to join their sports club, and he was ready to do anything to make Lee change her mind and join them. Lee told Cabin that if he could defeat him, she would consider his offer. However, Cabin said that he could not fight with the girl, as this would be considered a manifestation of his weakness and baseness in society. At this moment, Kim felt uneasy about what Cabin said right now. Meanwhile, Cabin continued to say that anyone who even tries to imagine fighting a girl is already considered trash who needs to have his personal belongings torn off. Then Lee agreed with Cabin's statement, and said that she herself was ready to tear off the personal belongings of someone who wanted a fight with a girl. Kim felt worse every second because if they had found out that Kim wanted to fight Lee, the two of them would have torn off his belongings and made a girl out of him. The next day, Cabin began looking for Lee to try to once again discuss the issue of her joining the sports club with her. During the search, Cabin thought only that he must, by any means necessary, ensure that Lee became a new member of the sports club. Lee knew that Cabin was looking for her, and she constantly tried to hide in various places so that Cabin would not find her. At this moment, Suhi suddenly appeared next to Lee, who accidentally scared Lee. Afterwards, Lee and Suhi sat on the stairs, and Suhi said that before that, she thought that Lee worked out hard every day to always stay in shape, to which Lee replied that she hated sports and that she didn't exercise anymore a long time ago. Lee told Suhi how as children, her father constantly subjected her and Hanbyul to various trainings so that in the future they would be able to protect both themselves and others without any problems. Sometimes Lee's father would throw her and little Hanbyul off a high cliff so that they could learn how to land so that they could survive falling from any height. Also, 
the father often forced Lee and Hanbiel to uproot large trees and squat with these trees on their shoulders. But the most hated thing for Lee and Hanbiel was how their father put them both in battle against the wild bear. So he listened to everything Lee told her, and she was in deep shock at how her father abused her and her younger brother as children. However, despite what Suhi heard from Lee just now, she said that on the other hand, she is even a little jealous of Lee. So he said that she had tried many times to lose weight, and every time she gave up, and she wanted someone to make her pull herself together and start exercising. But Lee thought that so he seemed to have no no extra weight. So he said that since she started being friends with Siho, she noticed that compared to Siho's legs, her legs looked a little thick. So he was also jealous of Siho not only because of her slender and cute legs, but also because she had an almost skinny belly. At one point, so he felt a little upset that she couldn't get in shape, and Lee immediately began trying to calm her friend down. At that moment, Jun suddenly appeared around the corner, trying to find her with Kaben. At first, Lee was going to get away from Jun as quickly as possible, that she came here for a different reason. Lee stopped when Jun said that Lee didn't have to join their sports club. Jun also said that she didn't want to force Lee into the sports club, and that she just wanted to talk to Lee. Jun sat next to Lee and Suhi and said that when Lee talked about how she didn't want to join the sports club, Jun thought that Lee was just trying to play hard to get. Jun also said that because of Lee's appearance, she thought that she really liked to play sports and do various exercises. Lee said that she has a completely normal, unremarkable physique, while Jun stared at Lee's toned legs. So he noticed from Jun's gaze that her doubts about Lee's strength still lingered in her head. Jun then said that she just wanted more girls in their sports club since Jun was the only girl who attended the sports club. Lee wished Jun luck in finding a new girl for the sports club, but she said that she had already found that girl. At that moment, Lee and Suhi began to look at each other and after a couple of seconds Suhi realized that she was the same girl that Jun had chosen to visit the sports club. At that moment, Suki was very scared that she would be working out in a sports club among a bunch of strong and muscular men. Towards evening, one of the hooligans came to the park to talk to Young about Kim. Meanwhile, Ian was sitting on a bench in a skirt, holding a textbook in his hand and was unhappy that this hooligan had come so late. At this point, the bully began to laugh at Ian due to the fact that Ian failed to defeat Kim, which is why he now has to wear a skirt. Then the bully began to laugh at Ian even more, suspecting that because of his studies, Ian had forgotten how to fight and because of this Kim defeated him. However, Yang said that he wears the skirt solely as a sign of atonement for his past mistakes. The bully sat down next to Ian and asked him what Kim was like during the fight. Yang said that when fighting with Kim, it seemed like he wasn't trying to use any tactics or techniques. Yang also added that Kim's most important weapon is rage, thanks to which Kim does not hold back and can fight even in the most difficult condition. The bully was not at all frightened by such a description of Kim, and he only became more eager to fight with Kim as soon as possible. Yang told the bully that if he wanted to fight with Kim, then he should only fight with him when exams are over at school so as to make too much noise during school hours. The bully felt that something was wrong with Yang, because before he would have told him to get rid of Kim as soon as possible, but Yang said that recently he has no right to tell the bullies. Yang was about to return home as soon as possible to better prepare for the exams, but the bully stopped him. Before Yang left, the bully asked Yang who he thought would win this fight, him or Kim. Previously, Jansio's school was considered one of the most dangerous schools where only the most inveterate hooligans studied. Since Yang Su Hyun entered Junseo High School, all the bullies have turned into exemplary students, and school discipline has become normalized over time. However, after a fight with Kim, in which Yang was defeated, Yang stopped maintaining order and discipline at school. But despite the fact that Yang stopped correcting the school's hooligans, the discipline at school did not become worse since now Kim began to monitor justice and school order. While Yang tried to give the bullies a second chance so they could change their ways, Kim immediately made it clear to the bullies that he would personally deal with any bully who tried to disrupt the school order. Compared to Yang's method of raising bullies, Kim's method of action seemed more effective and efficient. One day, Kim was able to protect one of the school's students from hooligans, who was being pestered by these hooligans. Siho secretly observed Kim's actions, and she was very pleased that Kim could stand up for those students who could not stand up for themselves. At this moment, Lee was passing by and accidentally saw Siho's sincere smile, and she was a little scared by such a sudden appearance. Lee suggested that Siho go to the buffet together, 
and Siho became interested in why Sahi began to spend less and less time with them. Meanwhile, Suki worked hard at a sports club to finally get in shape and lose weight. Over the past few days, Suki began to often come to the sports club and carefully monitor her diet. One day, Kim asked Chan what club he went to, and Chan said that he was going to go to the judo club right now. Then Kim asked Chan to introduce him to the strongest guys from there, but Chan refused him, because he understood that Kim was simply looking for more people with whom he could fight. After this, Chan asked Kim which club he would go to to which Kim replied that he was a member of the anime club because all the other clubs seemed too boring to him. When Chan found himself in the corridor, he saw an exhausted and tired Suhi, who was not at all like the Suhi he knows. John thought about how all his friends and him often spent time together, but at the same time he didn't talk to Suhi very much, since she was the most reserved among them all. Every time John was alone with Suhi, he tried to start some kind of dialogue with Suhi but every time they both weren't very good at talking to each other. This time, Jung decided to take the opportunity to say hello and talk to Suhi, but she didn't pay attention to him. John decided that Suhi simply didn't hear him, and he decides to touch her shoulder with his finger so that she can pay attention to him. However, when Jung touched Suhi, she immediately screamed from the pain in her muscles, causing her to be unable to stand on her feet and fall to the floor. At that moment, one of the girls, who also went to judo, came out into the corridor to find out what was happening here. This girl saw Jung next to Suhi, and she thought that he used judo techniques to attack Suhi. Jung tried to explain that he didn't do anything with Suhi and that he just wanted to talk to her. However, the girl did not understand how Jung Woo managed to kill Suhi if he just wanted to talk to her. A few minutes later, Suhi finally came to her senses and went to the sports club, where Jun was already working out. At that moment, Kaben appeared in front of Suhi, greeted Suhi and told her that today she would have a special workout that would make Suhi's body even more powerful. But Suhi herself only wanted to lose weight. After a few exercises, Suki asked Kaben to take a break for a while as her muscles began to ache again. Kaben was surprised that Suhi got tired so quickly, since they were doing the exercises that Jun had chosen especially for Suhi. Then Suhi realized that she was given exercises for professional athletes instead of a set of exercises for beginners and Jun just stood on the side and watched Suhi with a smirk on her face. Meanwhile, Kim was relaxing in the office where the anime lovers club was taking place, while the rest of the club members were loudly discussing various new anime and figurines based on them. Two weeks later, summer began and the air temperature was much higher than usual. That day Lee went to school, and it was very difficult for her to go in such unbearable heat. Despite such intense heat, Lee tried to make every effort to finally reach her class. When Lee finally reached the classroom and opened the door, she felt an incredibly pleasant feeling of freshness. A second later, Kim was behind Lee, who also wasn't feeling very well from the heat. Kim asked Lee to quickly move out of the way so that he could be in the office as quickly as possible. When Lee left, Kim immediately entered the classroom and sat down at his desk while he did not pay any attention to Chan. Lee and Chan were not at all happy with the state in which Kim was today. Lee assumed that Kim had started his period, but Zhang reminded her that this was impossible since Kim was a guy. In fact, Kim kept thinking about what Lee and Cabin said about how only a coward and a weakling would want to fight a girl, and now his desire to fight Lee became much less. Late in the evening, when school was over, a few kids on the way to the sports club were discussing the time that Jung accidentally knocked Suhi down, and they thought that Suhi didn't tell them anything because she was just being very shy. At that moment, Andohayan appeared in front of these guys, with whom Yang was discussing the upcoming fight with Kim, and from the clothes of the guys, he realized that they studied at the same school where Kim studied. Dohayan took a drag on his cigarette and started asking the guys if they knew anything about Kim. In response, the guys in uniform only asked Dohayan why he was interested in who Kim was. Dohayan said that it shouldn't concern them why he needed information about Kim, after which he continued asking questions about him. Gradually, the guys began to get annoyed by Dohayan's stubborn behavior. Then the guys from the sports club said that they knew some things about Kim, but they would not tell him anything about him. However, Dohayan didn't even get angry and told the guys that it was enough for him that they knew something about Kim, and therefore he just needed to beat this information out of them. After that, Dohayan immediately kicked one of the guys so hard that he just fell to the ground. After a couple of seconds, 
Dohayan managed to throw the rest of the guys from the sports club to the ground. Then Dohayan grabbed one of the guys and told him that if he didn't tell him about Kim right now, he would beat him to death. However, the guy from the sports club said that he lied to him about knowing something about Kim, and then Dohayan demanded the name of anyone else who might know something about Kim. Even despite his not very fortunate position, the guy from the sports department did not answer this question. When Kim was still very young, he loved to spend all his free time with his high school friend Lee Hyunsung. One day, while Kim was again having fun with his brother on the swing, he noticed that his brother's phone was ringing very often. Hyunsung said he didn't have to answer the call. Then Kim said that if Hyunsung gets calls so often, then it could be a very important call. Then Hyunsung stopped pushing Kim on the swing and said that this was indeed a very important call. After that, Hyunsung took out his phone from his pocket and answered the call while Kim's swing began to swing more and more quietly. After the call, Hyunsung was about to leave somewhere and told Kim that he had urgent matters to attend to. In fact, Kim was sitting on his desk and thinking about Hyunsung, who, unfortunately, had been dead for a long time. After a couple of minutes, Kim felt someone poking him with a finger to wake him up. When Kim stood up, he saw that Lee was pointing her finger at him who told him that he was being asked to come into the teacher's room. When Kim asked Lee what the teacher wanted from him, Lee said that she did not know and she suspected that Kim had done something wrong again. Before leaving the office, Kim pushed Lee with his shoulder, after which he headed towards the staff room. A couple of minutes later, Kim was already in the teacher's room, and there one of the teachers began to scold Kim. The teacher was dissatisfied with the fact that in one of the exams Kim put the first answer options in all questions to which Kim said that that day he was very sleepy and could not concentrate properly on the exam. At this point, another teacher said that at this age, guys like Kim often watch erotic videos on the internet, after which he told Kim that if he watches such videos too often, sooner or later he will simply rub his calluses. Then Kim said that if the teacher had nothing more to say, he would go, but the teacher wanted to say a few more words to Kim. The teacher also told Kim that if he did something like that again in the exam, he would be in very bad shape. The teacher also said that he knows very well that Kim fights very often, since a lot of guys talk about it. But Kim no longer paid much attention to the teacher's words. Meanwhile, not far from Kim, another teacher asked Jae Hyun to call those students who were supposed to stay after school yesterday. This teacher also told Jae Hyun that if he doesn't watch his classmates, they will become like Kim to which Jae Hyun said that nothing like that will happen in his class. After that, Jae Hyun went to his class and passing by Kim, he pushed him on the shoulder, which surprised Kim very much. The teacher who was talking to Kim thought that he pushed Jae Hyun's shoulder, after which he began to loudly shout at him. However, Kim immediately began to tell the teacher that it was Jae Hyun who dared to push him. However, the teacher did not believe that such a decent student as Jae Hyun could hit another student with his shoulder right in front of the teacher. The teacher also told Kim that if he still wanted to fight with the rest of the students, then let him do it only after the exams, after which Kim left the teacher's room and headed back to his class. School ended, evening came, and Kim returned home to his sister. Entering the house, Kim first saw how his older sister decided to get drunk again, but his sister said that even so she would live much longer than Kim. Kim decided that it was too late to somehow try to stop his sister, and he decided to just take some snacks from the table. Unexpectedly for Kim, his sister asked him when he would finally come to his senses and stop waving his fists. Also, Kim's older sister told him that time would fly by and that very soon Kim would become an adult. Kim's older sister also told him that he should live his life, despite the past. Kim remembered that whenever his sister gets drunk, she always brings up the topic, and Kim told her that they had already discussed this many times, and that they agreed not to bring it up again. After that, Kim went to his room, lay down on the bed and thought that he could no longer live like this, and that very soon he simply could not stand at all and would go crazy. A few days later, the exams ended and Lee was very happy about it, so so he decided to ask her if she did well in all the exams. However, instead of answering, Lee lashed out at Sohi and told her that she was completely rude for being interested in such things, which scared Sohi very much, suggesting that she couldn't do well on all the exams. After that, Lee saw Kim and asked him if he managed to pass the exams to which Kim only asked Lee not to talk to him. At that moment, so he looked at Lee and thought that just a couple of seconds ago she attacked her because she wanted to know how she passed the exams. When Kim and his friends left the school, they noticed a guy on its territory who, 
judging by his uniform, did not even study there. It turned out to be Dohayan, who was standing outside the school with a cigarette in his mouth, waiting for Kim to appear. When Dohayan saw Kim's mole under his eye, piercings, and blonde hair, he threw away his cigarette and walked towards Kim. When Kim noticed Dohayan walking towards him, he decided to ask him who he even was. However, instead of answering, Dohayan only quickened his pace, and when he was half a meter away from Kim, he was about to kick him. However, despite such an unexpected attack, Kim manages to dodge Dohayan's attack. Kim's friends were surprised not only by how suddenly Dohayan attacked Kim, but also by how Kim managed to react and remain unharmed. Dohayan looked at Kim and said that he was as agile as he was told. Kim turned to Dohayan and asked him who he was and what he needed from him. Dohayan then introduced himself to Kim and told him that he wanted to fight him to see what Kim was capable of in a fight. However, Kim said that he was not in the mood and that he did not want to fight today. Dohayan thought that Kim's desire to fight someone was not at all what he was told, and he told Kim that he wanted to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, to which Kim told Dohayan to find another opponent. Then Dohayan told Kim that he was exactly the same weakling as his friend Lee Hyun-sung was. Then Kim was very deeply touched by Dohayan's words after which he stopped and asked him how he knew Hyun Sung and that they were friends together. Dohayan said that he heard that at school Hyun Sung was an outcast and no one talked to him, and his only friend was little Kim. Dohayan also said that Hyun Sung not only couldn't stand up for himself or others, but he also couldn't ask others for help, which made him the biggest weakling and outcast in school. Dohayan also said that at one time Hyun Sung could not do anything except constantly run away from his problems and in the end he could not do anything except commit suicide. Kim was beside himself about how this freak knew him, and how he knew about what happened to Hyunsung. Lee saw how Kim started to get angrier with Dohayan every second, and she decided to grab Dohayan's hand. Lee immediately told Dohayan to apologize to Kim right now for everything he just said to him. Dohayan, not understanding what Lee was doing, told her not to get involved in someone else's conversation after which he demanded that she let him go. Lee decided not to let go of Dohayan, and then he tried to escape from her grip, but Lee's grip was too strong to simply break free. At that moment, Yan appeared and told Dohayan not to make unnecessary noise on the school grounds. Yan immediately became angry when he saw Lee next to Dohayan, who, upon seeing him, shouted about him that he liked to wear women's clothes. Dohayan told Yan that he only came here to simply challenge Kim to fight, to which Yan said that anything related to their fight should take place outside the school grounds. Dohayan was very annoyed that Yan was constantly ordering him around, and he reminded Yan that his time of dominating the bullies at this school was long past, and that he was no longer a boss to anyone. Dohayan also said that Yan lost that battle with Kim because he pretended to be an exemplary student, which is why over time his body was no longer so strong. Dohayan also told Yang that he really doesn't like it when those who are much weaker than him try to dictate to him. Suddenly Kim handed a small piece of paper between Dohayan and Yang, on which Kim wrote his phone number. Kim told Dohayan to send him a message indicating the location and time of the fight. Kim also told Dohayan that since he wanted it so bad, he was ready to beat Dohayan to death. Dohayan snatched the piece of paper with Kim's number from his hands and said that this was the best solution for both of them. Dohayan said that he could fight Kim right then and there, but he sees that Kim is at his best right now. Dohayan got ready to leave and told Kim that he was coming tomorrow to the place that he would indicate to him in the message. When Dohayan was out of sight, Kim asked Lee why she got involved in their conversation. Lee said the man was saying bad things to Kim and she wanted to intervene in the conversation to teach him a lesson. However, Kim said that this had nothing to do with Lee and that she should not have interfered. Lee was shocked by Kim's behavior, since she had never seen Kim in such a state in her life. Jaehyun told Kim that Lee just wanted to stand up for him and that's why she took his side, to which Kim replied that he didn't ask anyone to help him in this situation, after which Kim went home. On the way home, Kim thought about how Dohayan found out about Hyun Sung and who he could have gotten this information from. At first, Kim thought that Jung Sihian had told Dohayan, since he was one of the few people who knew about everything. But Kim thought that Jung would never have told about it, especially to a stranger. Then Kim decides that tomorrow he will personally ask Dohayan how he knew about Hyunsung and everything else that he told him. The next day, Kim came to the meeting place with Dohayan at the specific time he indicated in the message. Then Kim decides to immediately ask Dohayan how he knows about him 
and Hyunsung. Instead of answering the question, Dong Hyun said that he would answer Kim's question if he managed to defeat him, and Kim agreed to these terms. Before starting to fight, Kim decided to take off his shirt so as not to get it dirty during the fight. Immediately after that, Kim threw his shirt towards Do Hyun, knocking him over and diverting his attention. When Do Hyun threw Kim's shirt away from him, Kim at that very second manages to kick Do Hyun in the side. From such an unexpected blow, Do Hyun fell to the floor and placed his hand on the site of the blow. In less than a second, Kim was ready to punch Do Hyun in the stomach again as hard as he could. However, Do Hyun manages to block the blow with his hand in order to at least slightly contain the force of Kim's blow. However, despite this attempt at defense, Dong Hyun still failed to withstand the full blow which is why Kim throws him into one of the walls. Kim wanted to take advantage of the moment and have time to hit Dohyun again, but this time Dohyun managed to avoid the blow. When Dohyun dodged Kim's punch, he immediately decided to punch Kim in the face as hard as possible. After the punch, Dohyun told Kim that he really was as crazy in the fight as he was told. Kim looked at Dohyun and told him that he was already feeling very irritated lately. After that, Kim became even more angry with Dohyun and he stopped sparing his strength and started hitting Dohyun as hard as he could. During the fight, Dohyun remembered his recent conversation with Yang, in which he asked him who he thought would win this fight. That time, Yang told Dohyun that he couldn't tell him exactly which one would win, but he knew for sure that Kim was very dangerous when he was angry. Yang told Dohyun that day when he fought Kim that he would definitely beat Kim, but at one point he just wanted not to lose. That day was the first time Yang saw such tenacity and desire from Kim to defeat his opponent. At that moment Yang, despite his desire to emerge victorious, experienced such a strong feeling of fear that he had not experienced before. At one point, Dohyun suddenly started laughing despite the numerous wounds he received during the fight. Kim didn't understand why Dohyun was laughing and Dohyun told him that he had a lot of fun fighting an opponent like Kim. Afterwards, Dohyun told Kim that they should continue fighting, after which he called Kim a yellow-haired anchovy. Meanwhile, Lee was upset with Kim for not appreciating her help with Dohyun. Lee was very angry that instead of thanking her, Kim told her not to interfere in their conversation which made her very upset. To release all her pent-up anger, Lee hit the nearest wall with all her might, causing the wall to begin to crack. All this was observed by Chan, who wanted to call Lee to talk to her about Kim. Chong chose a local coffee shop as the place to talk, where he ordered two cups of Americano for himself and Lee. Zhang took the order and told Lee that if she didn't want an Americano, she could order something else. But Lee said it was okay since she liked iced Americano. When Lee started drinking her Americano, Zhang noticed that she didn't really like it, even though she had just said that she liked Americano, to which Lee said that she had never tried it. When Zhang sat down at the table, he took his glass of Americano and told Lee that he wanted to tell her a story that was very closely related to Kim. Meanwhile, Kim and Dohyun continued to fight each other and leave new bruises and wounds on each other. Kim could still continue to beat Dohyun while Dohyun himself was already having difficulty dodging Kim's attacks and inflicting new blows. After a few blows, Dohyun looked at Kim and realized that he didn't seem to be tired during the entire fight. After a few hard blows, Dohyun stretched his arm and reminded Kim that if he beat him, he would tell him how he knew that idiot and loser Hyunseong. Kim, trying to contain all his anger, told Dohyun not to call him an idiot and a loser. Hearing this, Dohyun suggested that Kim call Hyunsung a trash instead of an idiot and a loser. Unable to contain his inner anger, Kim immediately ran towards Dohyun and prepared to hit him right in the face. However, Dohyun not only manages not to take damage from Kim, but also grabs his arm and even hits him in the nose with his elbow. While Kim flew to the side from a strong blow, Dohyun thought that he had been missing out on an opponent in a fight without rules for a long time. Dohyun loved the way his opponent's fresh blood flowed straight onto the ground and left large marks on it. However, the most pleasant thing for Dohyun was the feeling of winning a fight without rules, where he could give his all while his opponent trembled in pain and fear. At this point, Dohyun moved closer to Kim and told him to get to his feet as soon as possible to continue their fight. Dohyun also told Kim to be as vigilant as possible since from now on Dohyun will stop feeling sorry for him. At the same time, Dohyun looked at Kim and thought about how he could quench his thirst for battle by fighting Kim. Throughout his childhood, Kim grew up without a mother, and his father worked very hard and was rarely at home. Kim also had an older sister, 
but at this time she began her teenage period, and instead of spending time with her younger brother, she constantly talked to her friends on the phone. However, Kim still had a best friend, Hyun Sung, with whom they spent a lot of time together. Even though Kim and Hyun Sung were not blood brothers, Hyun Sung always cared about Kim and Kim considered him the person closest to him. However, Kim's life changed greatly when he learned that Hyun Sung had passed away at one point. The cause of Hyun Sung's death was a bunch of hooligans who had been bullying Hyun Sung for a very long time. One day, these bullies again bullied Hyun Sung on the edge of a high cliff, and at one point, Hyun Sung accidentally fell off the edge of the cliff and fell down from a great height. After this incident, Kim with all his soul hated those freaks because of whom the person closest and dearest to Kim died. From that moment on, every time Kim saw bullies who bullied those weaker than them, he thought about what he should do so that he would never see these scum again. The only correct solution that Kim saw was to beat up such hooligans, since this was the most effective solution. From that moment on, Kim only thought that he could never ignore such actions, and he had to become strong enough so that no one else could resist him. Many years have passed since then, and Kim has indeed become strong enough to stand up to almost any bully without any serious effort. Kim was absolutely confident that he could fight back against bullies because he had become strong and intimidating. However, this time it was very difficult for Kim to damage Do Hyun and withstand his attacks. After the blow, Do Hyun sarcastically suggested that Kim take a break so that Kim could recover from his blows. However, Kim interrupted Do Hyun and said that he could easily withstand such weak blows from Do Hyun. In response, Do Hyun told Kim that he actually wouldn't stop the fight in the sweet spot. After that, Kim and Do Hyun continued to fight against each other, and Kim was very surprised by how Do Hyun did not get tired during the fight. What amazed Kim even more was that no matter how strong his blows were, Do Hyun was able to withstand almost any of his attacks. Then Kim started hitting Do Hyun faster and harder but he didn't care, as if he had just been hit with a feather. Then Kim believed that in reality Do Hyun was just pretending that he didn't care about his blows, and in fact he was barely holding back the pain. At one point, Kim was frightened by the fact that Do Hyun, instead of twisting his face in pain, simply took the blows and smiled at the same time. At one point, Kim was distracted by fear, and Do Hyun decided to take advantage of this and hit Kim. While Kim was dodging Do Hyun's punches, he was trying to figure out why Do Hyun was smiling during the fight. Kim was also very surprised by how Do Hyun managed to run to him so quickly and strike him so quickly. Within seconds, Kim realized that Do Hyun actually took great pleasure in fighting, and he was ready to dedicate his entire life to endless fights with people like Kim. Kim also thought that Do Hyun was the kind of person that no one looks down on. Until this moment, Kim considered himself a person who always strived for eternal battles and trials of fate but now he strongly doubted that he would be able to defeat Do Hyun. After several blows from Do Hyun, Kim could no longer stand on his feet, and due to lack of strength, he fell to the ground. After that, Do Hyun approached the prone Kim and told him that if he did not get up, continue the fight and defeat him, then Do Hyun would not be able to tell him from whom he learned about Kim's past. Without waiting for Kim to get to his feet, Do Hyun grabbed him by the clothes and lifted Kim in front of him. Seeing the unhealthy expression on Do Hyun's face, Kim thought that this was not a person, but a real monster. At one point, Kim became so scared that for a moment it seemed to him that he could not see or hear anything at all. At this moment, Do Hyun struck Kim with a strong blow, but Kim managed to absorb the enemy's attack. After the blow, Kim experienced unbearable pain in his hands, which he had probably never felt before from which he wanted to scream, but at the same time he managed to hold back the pain. During Do Hyun's next attack, Kim thought that until that moment he considered himself the strongest and invincible person. Even though he still considers himself strong, he thought that he was not strong enough to defeat Do Hyun. This time, Do Hyun's blow was so strong that Kim could no longer hold back the pain, and at one point he even cried a little from such pain. Do Hyun wanted to hit Kim with kicks, but Kim managed to dodge his blow and avoid another portion of pain. After dodging, Kim realized that Do Hyun had the same weapon as him, but Do Hyun's techniques were more lethal and less forgiving. After failing to damage Kim, Do Hyun stopped and told Kim that he was enjoying the fight right now. Do Hyun told Kim that their fight today was destined, and that Kim, like no one else, knows this thirst for a fight. Do Hyun also said that Kim also experiences this sense of risk when his own life is at stake 
and before that Dohayan thought that there were no people left in the world with whom he could measure strength. However, today Dohayan fought with Kim, in a fight against whom he felt that same feeling of risk and fight for his life. Dohayan also told the exhausted and exhausted Kim that he was exactly the same monster as himself. After that, Dohayan tuned in and wanted to continue fighting with Kim until one of them died. Kim could barely stand on his feet and remembered Yang's words that Kim was a monster, and he believed that Yang saw in him the same person as in Dohayan. While Dohayan walked closer and closer towards Kim, Kim began to think that he was not at all like the other hooligans. However, Kim was still tormented by the thought of why he felt the same desire to fight as the other hooligans. Kim was especially tormented by the thought of why he wanted to fight Lee while she was not a bad girl at all. Kim then felt that he had a better reason to fight other bullies than Dohayan. While Kim was completely lost in thoughts, Dohayan hit Kim in the face with all his might. Soon the rain stopped, and even though Kim could still stand, he didn't even try to stand in front of Dohayan and hit him back. Dohayan tried to understand what Kim was up to, but Kim himself no longer listened to Dohayan and continued to kneel in front of him. Then Dohayan felt that he had completely broken Kim's fighting spirit, and he decided to once again remind him of what would happen if Kim defeated him. Dohayan still did not stop provoking Kim to continue the fight, calling him and Hyun some weaklings, but Kim still did not succumb to such provocations. Afterwards, Kim told Dohayan that he lost their fight today and that he didn't want to fight anymore, which only made Dohayan angrier. An enraged Dohayan grabbed Kim, and told him that he couldn't give up so easily as he was still capable of continuing the fight. Dohayan also continued to provoke Kim and tell him that he is a monster like himself. Dohayan then told Kim that as long as they were both alive, the fight would not end, and so he demanded that Kim continue the fight now. However, Kim did not react in any way to Dohayan's screams and still did not try to overcome Dohayan. At this moment, Dohayan felt uneasy looking at Kim's broken spirit and he decides to finish him off in this state. However, just as Dohayan was about to strike, someone behind him grabbed his arm and prevented him from hitting Kim. The mysterious hooded man said that he was already tired of watching Kim get more and more seriously injured with each new fight. This person turned out to be Lee, who came here to protect Kim from certain death. Lee told Kim that if he didn't come home, his sister would be very worried about him. However, Dohayan interrupted Lee and told her that the fight couldn't end so easily since they had just started. Lee said she didn't care at all about it and didn't care that he didn't want the fight to end that easily or that quickly. Lee threw her umbrella on the ground and said that she was ready to fight Dohayan instead of Kim, and if he lost, he would ask Kim for forgiveness and never pester them again. Kim was not happy with this turn of events, but Dohayan was not against it, and he said that if she loses, she will step aside and watch him finish off Kim. While Dohayan was speaking, he immediately rushed towards Lee to attack her as quickly as possible. However, as soon as Dohayan reached Lee, she suddenly raised her leg up and hit Dohayan in the jaw. Kim was shocked at how Lee was able to defeat Dohayan so easily with just one blow. Lee's blow was so strong that Dohayan lost consciousness after the blow and fell to the ground. After the hit, Lee said it was time for them both to go home after which a shoe fell on her head and was knocked off during the hit. Kim could not believe that Lee was able to defeat Dohayan so easily, and he believed that after Dohayan's numerous blows, he was seeing strong hallucinations in front of him. After that, Lee took off her wet jacket, as she was afraid that it might make her sick. Kim said that in fact Lee was a real monster, and Lee started yelling at Kim for calling her names instead of thanking her. While Lee screamed at Kim more and more loudly, Kim tried to calm her down, and warn her about the danger behind. However, Lee did not listen to Kim, which is why Dohayan came to his senses, grabbed Lee by the head and slammed her head into the asphalt. Dohayan laughed loudly and hysterically, and said that Lee was just crazy and that for a moment he thought he was going to die. After that, Dohayan told Lee to attack him, which surprised Kim greatly. Kim then told Dohayan that he would not fight Lee since he originally wanted to fight him. However, Dohayan told Kim that not only had he lost interest in fighting him, but Kim himself had said a minute ago that he no longer wanted to fight. After that, Dohayan looked at Kim and told him that he had no intention of fighting another weakling from high school. At that moment, Lee didn't understand how Dohayan could survive her blow, after which she told Dohayan that after the fight, he would also have to apologize to Kim for the words he had just said to him. After that, Lee stood up and concentrated all her strength and thoughts on the fact that she must defeat Dohayan at any cost. When Dohayan approached Lee, 
she immediately prepared to kick Dohayan in the head again, but he managed to react and deflect Li's attack. In addition, Dohayan was also able to grab Li's leg and prepare to kick her to free herself from the grip. Li jumped up with her other leg and hit Dohayan with it, after which she freed herself from his grip. As soon as Li was on the ground, Dohayan ran up to her and tried to headbutt her. Dohayan's headbutt was so strong that Dohayan managed to knock Li down with this blow. Li really didn't like the fact that Dohayan was so resistant and impenetrable to her attacks. Li was soon able to get back to her feet, at which point Dohayan prepared to attack her again. Even though Dohayan failed to hit Li with his fist, he punched the wall and managed to push her into a corner. However, this time Li was not taken aback and manages to grab Dohayan's shoulder. While Li was holding on to Dohayan's shoulder, she jumped up and kicked Dohayan in the ribs as she jumped. Meanwhile, Kim looked at this fight and thought that this simply could not be possible. Despite the intense pain from Li's blow, Dohayan manages to grab onto Li, and it seems to her that he wants to knee her in the face. However, instead of kicking Li, Dohayan raised his leg higher and rested it on Li's shoulder. After such a move, Li cannot bear Dohayan's weight and falls to his knees, while Dohayan squeezes his legs and wraps them around Li's head. Li told Dohayan that she had no intention of losing to him and that she would get Dohayan to apologize to Kim by any means necessary. Li was surprised by Dohayan's tenacity and desire not to lose, and she believed that he was trying to win only so that he would not apologize to Kim later. However, Dohayan said that if he loses, then he should no longer appear in front of her eyes. But he really wanted to fight Li a bunch more times, since there are no more tough fighters in the world like her. Kim watched the fight from the side and at the same time was very worried about Li, and he shouted to her that she should break free from Dohayan's grip as soon as possible. Dohayan squeezed Li's head more and more every second, and he did not stop talking about how victory in this fight would be his. Li tried her best to get to her feet with Dohayan heavy around her neck, and she succeeded. Dohayan was a little surprised at Li's strength and thought that this girl was definitely crazy. After Li was able to get to her feet, she immediately tried to accelerate as quickly as possible and run towards one of the walls in order to completely neutralize Dohayan. Once Li had a good speed, she didn't stop in front of the wall and she accelerated so much that she ran right through the wall and left a hole in it, causing Dohayan to pass out. As Li and Dohayan ran through the wall, Kim approached the destroyed wall to see if Li was okay. Li rose to her feet and clutched her head due to the slight pain in her head from breaking through the wall. After that, Li said that after such a collision, Dohayan was unlikely to be able to get back on his feet, and that it was time for him and Kim to return home. As Li sat with Yum, Yun reminded her that Kim had recently been rude to her, to which Li said that she was very angry with him and that she would never help Kim again. Zhang then agreed with Li and said that Kim can be so rude sometimes. However, Chan immediately reminded Li that Kim had a very difficult childhood, and that in fact he was a person with a very deep and kind soul who was just a little unlucky in this life. Chong also told Li that Kim now needs a person who can become a good support for him and he said that this person at the moment is Li. Li didn't understand a little what Chan was telling her, and she asked him why he was so sure of this. Zhang said that Kim doesn't have many friends since most people are just afraid of him, and only Li was able to get so close to Kim that after some time they became very friendly with each other. Zhang also said that every time he saw Kim with Li, he was once again convinced that their relationship was different. In addition, Jung reminded Li how she came out in front of Dohayan to stand up for Kim. Finally, Chan asked Li to become a support for Kim, because now he needs a person who can be relied on in difficult times. Meanwhile, Ian was sitting in the city library with a bunch of books and preparing for exams. Soon, a small piece of paper fell on the table next to Jan with which someone wanted to attract his attention. However, Yang decided not to pay attention to this piece of paper and threw it away from him. A couple of seconds later, several more pieces of paper with various slightly offensive inscriptions fell onto Ian's table. At one point, Yang couldn't stand it and decided to find out who was throwing these pieces of paper, and it turned out to be Li. Li said that she urgently needed to talk to Yang, and that in order to do this they needed to leave the library for a while. Li was a little confused by the fact that instead of studying at night, Yang specifically went to the library, to which Yang told her that the teachers were very pleased with his desire to study, and therefore he should continue to put an effort in his studies. Yang wondered how Li knew he was here, and Li said that she asked the bullies who were in the same class as Yang. After this, 
Li told Yang that she had to stop Kim and Dohian's fight by any means, after which she asked Yang where they agreed to hold the fight. Yang said that there was no need for this, since he believed that people like Kim could only reform if they were beaten a little. Yang also said that this fight could be a good opportunity to calm down and teach Kim a lesson. Then Li said that in this case, she herself would defeat Dohian and take care of raising Kim if Yang told her the place of the fight. At first, Yang didn't understand how Li was going to fight Dohian. But almost immediately he remembered how in his fight with Kim she was able to break through an entire concrete wall. After the fight with Dohayan, Li told Kim that it was time for both of them to go home. Kim asked Li why she had come to help out a scumbag like him. And Li thought Kim had hit his head hard for him to say such things to himself. Kim reminded Li of the time she asked him that he wanted to fight her and Kim admitted that he actually wanted to fight her. Kim told Lee that for him there is nothing more fascinating than a fight with a strong person. Kim also said that he initially started fighting because he did not want to see how bullies bully the weak, since because of such bullies he lost someone very close to him. Kim believed that he fought purely for the sake of goodness, but only now he noticed how many people saw him as the same bully. Kim immediately began to cry and said that now he also sees himself as the same bully he used to fight against. Lee couldn't bear to see Kim beating herself up, and she told Kim that she didn't think he was a bad person at all. Kim then reminded Lee once again that he wanted to fight her, and Lee said that she still thought Kim was a bad person. Lee told Kim that if he or anyone else thought he was a bad person, he still knew how kind and sincere a person Kim could truly be. Lee said that at first she also thought Kim was crazy when he constantly followed her and stalked her. However, over time, Lee realized that Kim is actually a very friendly guy who always lends a helping hand to those who need help. Lee also said that Kim is a very kind guy with a sense of justice, who only at first glance looks like some kind of hooligan or slacker. Finally, Lee said that everyone can make mistakes and that you just need to remember about them and follow the right path. Then Lee said that Kim should live a happy life, and when, many years later, he saw that very person dear to him again, he could tell him about his happy memories. Lee told Kim that she was ready to become his support so that Kim would never be sad again and live a happy life. Kim didn't fully understand why Lee was trying so hard for him, and he decided to ask her about it. Lee replied to Kim that friends should always help and support each other in any situation. Kim looked at Lee and thought about how strong she was, both in body and soul, and that he wanted to become as strong as Lee. A few minutes later, Kim returned home, where his slightly angry older sister was already waiting for him. Kim's older sister was about to scold her younger brother for walking along the street at night again, but her sister was very surprised when she saw that Kim did not come home alone. It turned out Kim came home with Lee who kept her eyes closed because she didn't want to see the code to Kim's apartment. As soon as Kim arrived home, the first thing Kim did was apologize to his older sister for coming so late and making her worry about him. Kim's older sister, with a frightened look, asked Kim who was with him, to which Kim said that he had come with a friend. Kim's older sister greeted Kim's friend as politely as possible, as if she were greeting an adult, to which Kim said that Lee was younger than her, and that she did not need to be so polite. Then Kim and Lee turned back and saw Handil standing behind them. Kim and Lee were very scared when they saw Handil suddenly appear behind them. After finding his older sister, Handil told Lee that he had been looking for her for a long time, and finally he succeeded. Lee was so scared that she hit her little brother in the face out of fear. Feeling ashamed, Lee grabbed Handil, said goodbye to Kim and ran home as quickly as possible. While Lee and Handil were talking outside the door, Kim's older sister asked her brother if it was really his friend, to which Kim replied that they were indeed friends with Lee. Returning home, Lee's father punished his daughter again and forced her to kneel with her hands up. Lee's father wanted to ask his daughter why she returned home so late, to which Lee said that she was out with Suhi. However, Hanbyal immediately interrupted his sister and told his father that he saw her again with Kim and this brother's act irritated Lee very much. Then Lee's father asked Hanbyal and his wife if Lee had acted well in such a situation, to which everyone unanimously replied that Lee had acted very badly. Then the entire Lee family felt that Lee deserved a special punishment, and this frightened Lee herself very much, since she did not at all understand what kind of punishment Lee was expecting. After that, Lee was given rubber gloves and liquid soap, and she still didn't understand. As it turned out later, as punishment, Lee had to take care of Roni all day. Previously, Lee's mother and father, along with Handiel, took care of Roni every day, 
and they were very happy that today Lee would take care of all the care. Before this, Lee's mother was responsible for keeping Roni clean, so she washed Roni every day. In addition to bathing, Roni also needed to cut his nails and brush his teeth, which was usually done by Father Lee. Feeding Roni was also equally important, and Hanbiel fed Roni every day cat food with various nutritional supplements for professional athletes. Lee's family reminded her that from the moment she brought Roni home, she had never cared for him. Also, Lee's family told her that since then, Roni has become a full-fledged member of the family, and today Lee must take care of him all day. Lee told Hanbiel that she would remember this to him, but Hanbiel no longer listened to his sister, closed the door, and left his older sister in the same room with Roni. Lee felt that she simply had no choice but to accept her punishment and take care of Roni all day. The first thing Lee was going to do was wash Roni, but he was already preparing to run away from Lee. Then Roni began to try to escape, but Lee barely managed to grab him and hold him in his hands so that he would not run away. Without stopping his attempts to escape from Lee, Roni began to scratch her so that she would let him go. After a few seconds, Roni managed to escape from Lee's arms and run out of her room, and Lee immediately began to catch him. Lee asked Hanbiel to help her with Roni, but Hanbiel did not listen to his older sister at all and continued to watch cartoons. Lee was very angry that Hanbiel was deliberately not paying any attention to her, and she decided to hit him in the face with her knee so that he would finally take his mind off the cartoons and help her. At one point, Roni hid in the corner and Lee decides to take this opportunity and catch Roni. While Lee tried to catch Roni and asked her little brother for help, Hanbiel just watched what was happening and laughed at his sister. Then Lee decided to hit Hanbiel again, and in the end Hanbiel agrees to help her older sister with Roni. While Lee washed Roni, Hanbiel with a beaten face held Roni so that he would not accidentally run away while washing. After a few minutes, Lee was finally able to wash Roni, and after washing, he was perfectly clean. However, Lee found it very difficult to wash Roni, and after washing Roni, she immediately fell to the floor due to extreme fatigue. Lee raised her head, looked at the clean Roni, and wondered if this cat understood how hard it was for her to wash him. Lee closed her eyes and felt bad for not understanding how difficult it was for her family to care for Roni. At that moment, her family approached Lee and reminded her that in addition to washing Lee, she needed to trim Roni's nails brush his teeth and feed him. Lee was afraid to imagine how difficult the rest of the cases connected with Roni would be. Last night, when Lee and Handel went home, Kim apologized to his older sister and told her that from now on he will no longer fight and will start studying well. Kim's older sister did not understand what happened to Kim and why he suddenly decided to change so dramatically, to which Kim told his sister that nothing had happened and that he just wanted to become a better person. After that, Kim went into his room sat on the bed and thought that it was high time for him to put an end to his antics. Kim still couldn't forget Lee's words that she was ready to become his life support. Kim felt good in his heart from the realization that despite all his antics, Lee still sees him as a good person. The next morning, Kim woke up at 8 a.m. in order to quickly change his life for the better and get some things done. As soon as Kim woke up, the first thing he did was to clean up the house a little. After Kim cleaned the entire house, he decided to water some house plants. Kim's older sister was very surprised that her younger brother decided to change so dramatically. Kim didn't understand why his older sister was unhappy that he had decided to change for the better. Kim's older sister said that she had some plans for the evening, and she asked Kim to handle dinner himself. When Kim asked his sister who she decided to date, her sister said that she wanted to spend time with Kang Siun, whom Kim simply hated. As Kim's older sister prepared to leave, Kim told her not to bring Kong home under any circumstances. Kim's older sister promised that she would not bring Kong home so as not to irritate Kim again. However, in the late afternoon, Kim's older sister returned home with Kong, who was already intoxicated. Also, Kim's older sister told Kong that Kim couldn't stand her, for which Kong called Kim a brat. Kim was disappointed when he found out that Kong would be staying at their house for the night today. Kong Siun was best friends with Kim's older sister whom she had been friends with since middle school. In addition, Kim constantly disliked Kong for a variety of reasons. Previously, when Kim was 12 years old, Kong constantly treated Kim like a little boy. At the age of 15, Kim decided to dye his hair blonde for the first time. Kong immediately made fun of Kim and said that Kim's blonde hair color didn't suit him at all when she first saw him in this new look. Kim was especially annoyed when Kong said that this hair color was very similar to her hair color 
and she said that Kim specially made such a paired hair color. While Kim was sitting in his room at the computer, Khan burst into his room and wanted to borrow his clothes. Khan said that Kim's older sister's clothes were too small for Kong, and she thought that Kim could give her his own clothes. Kim handed Khan his t-shirt and told her to leave her room as soon as possible. Kim was embarrassed that Khan decided to change clothes right in front of him, which Khan herself did not pay much attention to. Khan said that since she has almost a family relationship with Kim, he shouldn't be so embarrassed. Kim thought it was time for him to use force but at the same time he tried to restrain his emotions. As soon as Khan changed her clothes, she immediately lay down on Kim's bed, which Kim himself did not like very much. Khan lay down on Kim's bed, turned to him and said that she was very sorry that Kim had changed so much, since she thought that Kim used to be a very sweet and good boy. With every second, Kim wanted to use force more and more and also with every second it became more and more difficult for him to restrain his anger. However, at one point, Khan said that she did not come here only to ask Kim for clothes. Khan told Kim that she learned from his older sister that Kim had decided to make a big change for the better. Khan said she still didn't understand the reason for the drastic change, but she was glad that Kim decided to become a better person. Khan also told Kim that every time she went out with his older sister, she always talked about Kim which Kim himself was somewhat ashamed of. Khan continued to look at Kim and told him that she now thought Kim seemed calmer and more reasonable. However, Khan said that she was somewhat frightened by such drastic changes in Kim, and she thought that Kim had joined some kind of sect, to which Kim told her that she was just drunk and talking about some kind of nonsense. Kim told Khan that once he entered high school, he met a very nice person there who he ended up becoming friends with, and he wants to become a strong person like his friend. Kim also added that he wants to become as strong as his new friend, not only in body, but also in soul, in order to be the same reliable support for his family. Khan was very happy for Kim and felt that Kim was finally starting to mature. After that, Khan got up from Kim's bed and told him that he should treat this friend well, and that Kim should definitely treat this friend with something, after which Khan went to bed. As soon as Khan left the room, Kim felt that he had never really thanked Lee for saving him. The next day, Kim went to school, hoping that he would meet Lee there again. As soon as Kim entered the classroom, he saw Lee, who was not in the best condition. Kim approached Lee and addressed her as a master, explaining that he would take her as an example as his teacher, to which Lee told him that there was no need for this, since it greatly embarrassed her. When Kim wanted to ask Lee what was wrong with her, Lee told Kim that she was very hot and that she could not stand the heat very well and she really wanted to eat something tasty and cold. Then Kim suggested that Lee go together after class and eat a portion of cold ice cream. Kim told Lee that he never thanked Lee properly, so he wanted to thank her by buying her some ice cream. Lee was once again uncomfortable with Kim calling her master again. Lee immediately punched Kim in the stomach and told him not to address her as master anymore. On the same day, all the students at Junseo's school were talking about how Kim got into a fight with Dohyan. Kim got very angry when someone said that some fool intervened in the fight between Kim and Dohyan and stopped them. After that, Kim turned to Lee again as a master and asked her which ice cream she wanted to choose. Lee felt very embarrassed that Kim called her master in front of all the students. Out of awkwardness, Lee immediately grabbed Kim by the hand and led him out of the cafe. The Kinso school students did not understand what kind of situation had just happened between Kim and Lee. When Kim and Lee were on the roof of the school, Kim asked Lee what just happened, and Lee asked Kim the same question. Lee told Kim that if he, as the leader of the school, called her master in front of other students, it would cause unnecessary attention to her. Kim said that he respects Lee very much, and that's why he calls her master while Lee thought that now Kim annoys her even more than before. After this, Lee turned to Kim and told him that since she was only 16 years old, the title of master was somewhat burdensome for her. Therefore, as an alternative, Lee suggested that Kim begin a secret apprentice-master relationship. Kim did not fully understand what other secret relationship between student and master Lee was now telling him about. Lee told Kim that if he agreed to have a secret student-student relationship with her, then she would train Kim. Kim told Lee that if that was her wish, then he agreed to have a secret student-student relationship with her. When school ended, Kim called Lee master again and suggested they go eat ice cream together. Lee immediately started yelling at Kim for completely forgetting about their agreement, and Kim immediately started apologizing to her, while the rest of the students still had no idea what they were talking about. At one point, 
all of Kim's classmates, along with Lee, were very scared of something, and Kim did not understand what exactly happened. At that moment, Dohyan entered the class, which somewhat frightened everyone except Kim, who had not yet realized that Dohyan had come to them. After that, Kim turned back and saw Dohyan and didn't understand what Dohyan wanted to do this time since he himself came to their class. Kim then decided to directly ask Dohyan what he wanted to do this time. After that, Lee reminded Dohyan that if he appeared in front of them again, she would punish him again. However, Dohyan immediately calmed everyone down and said that he didn't come here to fight. After that, Dohyan knelt down which greatly surprised Kim and his classmates. Dohyan said that he sincerely apologizes to Kim for humiliating him in front of everyone and touching him where it hurts by reminding him of Hyun Sung's death. After Dohyan's apology, Kim asked Dohyan how he knew about his past and Hyun Sung. However, Dohyan reminded Kim that he would tell him about Hyun Sung if he defeated him. Kim immediately remembered their agreement and resigned himself to the fact that he would not be able to find out from Dohyan who told him about Hyunsum. After that, Dohyan got up from his knees and told Kim that because Kim held himself well in the fight, he would give him a little hint. After that, Dohyan told Kim that the person who told him about Kim's secret was studying at the same school with him. After school, Kim and Lee went to a cafe, where Lee ordered ice cream with mango chunks, which she had been dreaming about all this hot day, before eating her dessert. Lee decided to take a photo of it first. However, before Lee had time to take a photo of her ice cream, Kim was already preparing to eat it. Lee was very angry with Kim for being so late and getting ready to eat ice cream, which made Kim feel ashamed. At one point, Lee asked Kim if he was okay when he couldn't find out from Dohyan who told him about Hyunsum. Lee then felt that at that moment she should have forced Dohyan to tell everything. However, Kim said that everything was fine with him since over time he himself would find out who told Dohyan about Hyunsung, because if he found out everything right away, then it would still be just as unpleasant for him. Lee told Kim that if she could help him in any way, he could always turn to her. After that, Lee suggested that Kim follow each other on Instagram, but Kim told Lee that he didn't even know what that was. Kim told Lee that he was too busy fighting, so he didn't think about joining any social media which only made Lee laugh more. Then Lee asked Kim for his phone number so she could register him on Instagram right now. Afterwards, Lee took Kim's profile photo, and Kim's photo was a little awkward for Kim. Lee was touched by how cute and cute Kim turned out in the photo. When Kim returned home, his older sister had already prepared dinner for him. Instead of eating his dinner right away, Kim immediately took out his phone and started taking pictures of all the food and his older sister was surprised that Kim finally got himself an Instagram page. When the older sister wanted to see Kim's profile, she saw a ridiculous photo of him on his profile, to which Kim told her that it was a girl who took the photo. As soon as Kim's older sister heard about the girl, she wanted to know from Kim if they were dating, to which Kim said that he was not dating this girl. Kim asked his sister if his profile photo was that ridiculous since the girl told him he looked really cute in the photo. Then Kim's older sister was afraid that something was wrong with her brother, and she decided to take his temperature, thinking that Kim was sick. The next day at Junseo school, the students are preparing for a sports competition, and the first thing the students must do is choose the sports uniform they will wear for the competition. The boys offered to participate in a football uniform, but the girls were against this proposal. Then the girls invited everyone to hold sports competitions, dressed in military uniforms. The boys were categorically against wearing military uniforms at competitions, since after school all the boys would have to go to the army after school, and there they would have to dress in military uniforms. While everyone was arguing with each other about what uniform was best to wear at the competition, Kim just sat and thought that in fact it doesn't matter at all what everyone wears. At that moment, Lee approached Kim and suggested dressing in a police uniform and Kim completely agreed with her opinion. After this, Chan approached Kim and said that all the students had already made a choice, and Kim demanded that everyone reconsider their choice in favor of the police uniform. Once all the students had decided on their sports uniform, all the students began to choose who would take part in which sport. A few days later, a sports competition was held at school, and all the students from each class gathered to prove to everyone their athletic superiority over the rest of the classes. Before the start of the competition, Kim and Chan decided to apply sunscreen to avoid getting burned under the scorching sun. At that moment, Lee and Suhi appeared and also prepared for the start of the competition. And before the competition, 
Lee decided to tie her hair in two ponytails, which everyone thought was very cute. At that moment, Lee suggested that everyone take a group photo and then post the photo on Instagram. In Lee's photo, everyone looked satisfied and happy, and only Kim looked a little awkward. After Lee took a group photo, Kim felt someone handcuff him. Later, Kim saw Siho, who was wearing a police uniform, and she was the one who handcuffed him. Lee saw Siho and told her that the police uniform suits her very well, to which Siho told Lee that her ponytails suit her very well. After that, Kim asked Siho to remove his headphones, but after several attempts, Siho said that the lock on the handcuffs was jammed and therefore she would not be able to remove the handcuffs so easily. A couple of minutes later, Everyone saw Kim and Siho stuck together in toy handcuffs. Many people looked at how Kim and Siho were stuck in handcuffs, and many guys were somewhat jealous that Kim was in such a situation. However, at this moment, Lee decided to help Kim Siho, and she decided to break those handcuffs. After Lee's blow, the handcuffs broke and Kim and Siho were free, which actually upset Siho a little. Before announcing the start of the sports competition, the director came to the podium to give an instructive speech and many students did not like this so much that many of them shouted to the director to quickly fail and start the competition. After this, one of the teachers came to the podium and wanted to list a series of boring prizes that the students would receive, including a side dish of chicken, tickets to a museum, and other minor prizes. Kim thought that he had never lost in a sports competition before, and he was confident that he would easily get his first place. At this moment, fifth-grade student Im Jae-hyun suddenly appeared handing out bottles of water to everyone on his team. Jaehyun told Kim that his class and Kim's class were teamed up this year, and he said that they had to give it their all to beat everyone and get their first place. After that, Kim turned to Lee and saw deep surprise on her face. Kim walked over to Lee and Suhi and handed them one bottle of cold water each. Suhi told Kim and Lee that she was jealous of their class because with students like them, their class would be easily defeated. However, so he told them that her class was also prepared and that they would not give in. At that moment, Sabine suddenly appeared in front of Kim and Lee with her friends in police costumes, who were also participating in sports competitions. While Sabine was talking about how they had no equal in the competition, Lee mimed with her fingers how she tickled Sabine. Sabine could not stand such pressure from Lee and began to laugh hysterically, remembering the incident when Lee managed to tickle her half to death. After a couple of seconds of hysterical laughter, Sabine could not stand it and fell to the ground, and then Sabine's friends tried to bring her to her senses. Lee immediately started laughing at Sabine and saying that they had no equal in competitions. The first competition was a tug of war, with two opposing teams struggling to pull the middle of the rope to their side. At one point, Lee put in more effort to make sure she led her team to victory. Thanks to Lee's efforts, her team was able to easily win and earn their first points for the victory. Sabine was upset that they lost to the other team in the first round, and she and her friends began to resent the fact that the opposite team defeated them so easily. The next competition in school competitions was cockfighting, and already many students began to give up in the first seconds. June was one of the few members who was able to easily last this long. After some time, Jun demanded that Lee step out of the crowd and have a round with her. Lee didn't understand why Jun wanted to compete against her in this competition since they were both on the same team. However, this did not stop Jun, and she invited Lee to conduct a mortal fight between them. At this point, one of the hosts told Jun that if she didn't put on her team uniform right now, she would receive her first point penalty. Jun said that the other members weren't in very good shape and she didn't need the team uniform as she had full confidence in her abilities. At that moment, Kaben appeared and ordered Jun to put on her team uniform right away. In the end, Jun had to wear a bear costume, which made her look really cute. The next competition was dodgeball, and Sabine said that Lee would not be able to beat her, as Sabine said that she was very good at dodgeball and that she simply had no equal. Sabine made the first throw, and Lee was easily able to catch the ball and prevent the team from losing. Lee made the next throw, and not only was she able to hit Sabine with the ball, but she also hit Sabine's friends in one throw. At this moment, Kim could be heard from the crowd supporting Lee, calling her a great master. While the other players were throwing the ball at each other, Lee simultaneously dodged the ball and yelled at Kim for calling her master again in front of the others. Meanwhile, Kim and Jong were surprised at how skillfully Lee could dodge the ball. At this moment, Siho looked at Kim and hoped that Kim would root for her as much as he did for Lee. After the dodgeball competition, Siho praised Lee for her excellent dodgeball game, 
and she suggested that they all go out together after the competition. Suddenly the guys started shooting water from bottles at each other out of boredom, which the girls didn't like a bit. Lee did not understand how the guys shot water at each other, because they had ordinary bottles, to which the guys answered her that it was enough to just make a small hole in the bow cap and press on the bottle. Kim and Chan looked at these guys from the outside and did not understand how anyone could behave so irresponsibly. However, after a couple of seconds, Kim and Chan took out their bottles and began shooting water at each other. The more people started shooting water at each other, the more fun everyone became. At one point, while the guys were shooting water at each other, one of the guys accidentally hit Lee with water. However, instead of getting angry or hitting whoever hit Lee with the water, Lee also took her bottle and started shooting with it too. Suki looked at all this from the outside and thought that all those who shot water from bottles simply took it and forgot about the competition. After that, so he looked at Siho and thought that at least she was acting like an adult and reasonable person. However, after a few seconds, Siho could not restrain herself, prepared her bottle and also started shooting water. Siho then ran up to Kim with Lee, and they both began spraying cool water at Kim. After a few seconds, everyone started shooting at Suhi and trying to persuade her to join them. At that moment, Jun passed by Suhi, and she began to wink at her, hinting at her to help her. Jun saw Kim and Lee shooting at Suhi and thought it looked really funny. In the end, Jun didn't help Suhi and just watched as Kim and Lee continued to shoot water at Suhi. After a couple of minutes, Kim and Lee ran out of bottled water and stopped shooting water at each other. Meanwhile, Jun looked at the wet Suhi and did not stop laughing at what had just happened to her. A few minutes later, a basketball match began between two different teams. In this game, Jong's team won and all the players on his team called him 185 because of his height. The girls were surprised by Chan's height, since they had not noticed that Chan was so tall before. At this point, they began to think that Chan was a very cute guy, and many girls wanted to get his phone number. Kim overheard the girls talking about Chan, and he was surprised that the girls began to like Chan so quickly. However, as soon as the girls saw Kim looking at them, they immediately decided to leave as soon as possible. While the girls were leaving, they looked at Kim and did not understand how Chan could be friends with such a bully like Kim. Kim believed that it was his own fault that during his entire time at school he had created for himself the image of a hooligan, with whom it was very difficult to find a common language and make friends. At that moment, Chan called Kim over to rejoice together for his victory in basketball. Kim approached Jung and told him that he was being talked about a lot by several girls who were watching him play and that they immediately left when they saw Kim. However, Kim was very surprised when Chan told him that he already has one girl whom he likes very much. Kim decided to ask Chan why he didn't tell him about this girl earlier, to which Chan replied that Kim had recently ruined his entire relationship with this girl. Before going to rest after basketball, Jung wished Kim good luck in his next football game. Kim looked at Jung was back and thought that of all the guys in the class, he was the only one who felt like he was wasting his youth. Kim also felt that if he were here from the past, he would simply continue to waste his youth. After that, Kim looked at the crowd, saw Lee among the students, and thought that if it weren't for her, he would still continue to lead his previous lifestyle. Kim immediately felt better when he remembered how Lee advised him to live his life with dignity, so that it would contain as many happy and pleasant memories as possible. A few seconds later, a fierce game of football began with each team doing everything possible to win. During the game, Kim ran past his opponents with the ball without any problems and with an irresistible desire to score a goal. The players from the other team decided that with such a character, Kim would try to score the ball into the goal without anyone's help, and they decided to take advantage of this feature of Kim. Then the players from the opposite team decided to surround Kim so that he could not score the ball into the goal on his own, and thus they could intercept the ball from him. However, Unexpectedly for all the players from the other team, Kim passed the ball to one of the players on his team. The players from the other team were very surprised that, despite his character and style of play, Kim still passed the ball. Meanwhile, Kim looked at the surprised faces of his opponents and was pleased that he managed to deceive the entire opposing team. While the opponents were distracted by Kim, one of the players to whom Kim passed the ball passed the ball to Jong. At that moment, Chan focused on the enemy goal and scored the first goal, thereby earning the first point for his team. After the goal, Chan told Kim that he did not expect him at all that Kim would still decide to pass the ball to someone on the team. In response, Kim asked Chan not to be sarcastic in front of him anymore, 
But Chan no longer listened to Kim and went to prepare for the next football game. However, Kim was not too bothered by the fact that Zhang did not hear him, since he was already determined to continue leading his team to victory. A few minutes later the next game of football began, and just like in the last game, Kim again gave it his all. With each goal scored, Kim and his team were getting closer to winning this competition. While Lee was cheering for Kim and his team, some were discussing how Kim might even be a little better at the sport than Zhang. At one point, Lee started shouting even louder about how well Kim was playing and telling everyone that she was friends with Kim. At this moment, Siho was watching the game with all her pleasure and thinking about how well Kim was playing. At one point, all the spectators and players noticed that something strange happened to Kim during the game. When the players tried to find out from Kim what happened to him, he said that due to an unsuccessful delivery of the ball, he injured his leg. However, almost immediately Kim calmed down and said that he wanted to avoid the serve, which caused him to trip over the ball himself. The players asked Kim if he could continue playing, to which Kim said that he could continue playing, but everyone saw how badly Kim was limping and everyone thought that it would be better for Kim to quit the game. However, Kim claimed that he was capable of continuing to play, and at that moment Kim's leg gave out and he began to fall. As soon as Kim began to fall, Lee immediately ran up to him, who managed to catch Kim and prevent his fall. Lee noticed that Kim was now unable to walk on his own, and she told Kim to sit on her back right now. Afterwards, Lee put Kim on her back and told one of the coaches that Kim was no longer competing and that she would take him to the aid station. Kim was ashamed that Lee dragged the school leader on her back, and he asked Lee to let him go, but Lee immediately refused him. Then Kim quietly asked Lee if she was not ashamed of the fact that she picked up the guy in front of everyone and put him on her back. Kim told Lee that after this incident, Everyone will understand that Lee is friends with a bully like him. However, Lee said that she is not at all worried about what other people might think, since she is just helping her friend. Lee also immediately said that even though she was just helping her friend, she was very ashamed that she had to pick up the guy, and so she told Kim that for this he should treat her again. After that, Lee said that she was just joking about Kim having to treat her, but she was still ashamed of carrying a guy on her back. When Kim and Lee reached the first aid station, the nurse said that Kim had a very serious injury and would have to go to the hospital. When Kim went to the hospital, his leg was put in a cast, and Kim will have to walk with crutches for some time. When Kim's friends saw him with a broken leg and crutches, everyone immediately began to laugh, since when he fought, he did not receive a single serious injury. The next day, Kim's class celebrated their victory in the school competition as the class took a well-deserved first place. The whole class was very happy about their victory, since each student was entitled to a portion of spicy chicken legs. The whole class was grateful to Kim for the fact that he had contributed the most effort to this victory, and some students handed him one chicken leg as a sign of gratitude. That's how this school competition ended and everyone had a lot of fun with it. Also, until Kim's leg recovered, some of his classmates left a lot of different nice inscriptions and drawings on his cast. Meanwhile, Sabine's fourth grade class was dissatisfied with the fact that they took third place, as they were given eggplant hot dogs as a prize. Sabine then started blaming Siho for not putting in her best effort on purpose but Siho quickly reminded Sabine that she was the reason they quickly lost in dodgeball. Siho said that they had to eat all the hot dogs that were handed to them anyway, and she suggested that they all play rock-paper-scissors together, and the first one to lose would have to eat all the hot dogs. Sabin and her friends said that they wouldn't play, and then Siho said that they were just scared, and she decided to ask someone else to play, and in the end, Sabin and her friends decided to play. As soon as the girls started playing, Sabine immediately lost in the first round. Sabine was very upset that she would have to eat all the eggplant hot dogs. A month after the competition, so he asked Jun if she could see everything well. Jun, with her bangs reaching her eyes, said that she could partially see something through her hair. So he told Jun that it was time for her to tidy up her hair. But Jun did not pay attention to her hair and said that it was time for her to go to another training session. Because of her hair, Jun couldn't see the wall in front of her causing her to hit herself hard, and Jun still decided to cut her hair a little. Before Suhi started cutting Jean's hair, she said that she didn't care at all how her hair would look from the outside, and all that was important to her was that her hair didn't interfere with her vision. After a couple of minutes, Suhi finished cutting Jun's hair, who really liked the way Suhi cut her hair. When Suhi and Jun were in the locker room, Suhi asked Jun how often she goes to the hairdresser, 
and Jun said that she rarely goes to get her hair cut because she's just too lazy to take care of her hair. Coming out of the locker room, Jun told Sohee that she did a very good job cutting her hair, and she offered Sohee to cut Kaben's hair, to which Sohee said that she had never cut a guy's hair before. After that, Kaben entered the gym. Only his nose was visible behind his hair. Sohee and Jun looked at Kaben and so he thought that he really needed a haircut. June approached Cabin and told him that he urgently needed his hair cut, and she suggested Cabin so he as a hairdresser, and Cabin agreed to have his hair cut a little. The rest of the sports club members supported Jean's idea to cut Cabin's hair, since in the summer a short haircut would suit Cabin best. Cabin sat down on a chair and told Sohi about his haircut the same thing that June told her before she cut hers that he didn't care what he looked like as long as he got his hair cut quickly. Meanwhile, Kim noticed that Chan was getting ready to go to judo training again, and Chan was very surprised that Kim no longer asked him if new members had appeared in his circle. Chan also noticed that Kim no longer had a cast, to which Kim told Chan that he himself did not notice how quickly the time passed during which his leg was healed. After that, Chan noticed that Kim's hair had grown slightly. And at that moment Kim also noticed that Chan's hair had also become slightly longer than usual. Chan said that he purposely grew his hair so long because he thought it made him look much more attractive. At one point, Lee interrupted Chan and said that she didn't like guys with long hair at all. Siho also said that she didn't like long hair on guys, as she felt that long hair made her feel weird and made guys look a little messy. At the time, Lee said she liked it when guys kept their hair neat and trim recalling images of the same guy she watches on TV. Kim tried to tease Chan a little and tell him that Lee was right about something, but Chan did not take Kim's words seriously. Lee said that Kim also looked a little awkward, to which Kim told Lee that he would like to go to the hairdresser this week and get his hair done. Then Lee decided to ask Kim what kind of hairstyle he would like to give himself. Kim thought for a moment and said that he would like to make his hair a little neater. At this moment, Kim thought that now he acted as if he wanted to fit into the type of guys that Lee liked. Kim noticed that Chan understood what he was thinking about, and he decides to get out of this situation as soon as possible. Then Kim immediately said that he planned to simply tint the ends of his hair blonde. However, Lee said that a neat hairstyle like the guys on TV would suit Kim very well. Then Lee began to imagine that if Kim did her hair neatly, she would think that a guy from the boy group would study with her in class, which only scared Kim more. Meanwhile, Suki got ready to cut Kaben's hair, and Kaben himself couldn't wait to finally get his hair cut. Suki began to carefully and quickly cut Kaben's hair so that he would definitely like his new image. When Suhi was almost finished cutting Kaben's hair, Jun and the rest of the sports club members couldn't believe what they saw. As soon as Suki cut Kaben's hair, Kaben saw the faces of the sports club members and thought that Suki only made it worse and now he looks very ugly. However, Suki told Kaben that he now looked even more handsome than before, after which she gave Kaben a mirror so that he could see his new look. Kaben picked up the mirror, looked into it, and saw in the reflection a pretty face that he had not seen for a long time. No matter how long Kaben looked in the mirror, he still could not believe that this handsome man was him. All the members of the sports club were shocked that Cabin suddenly turned out to be handsome, and many began to call him a traitor for hiding his true face for so long. After so he got his hair cut by Cabin, he immediately began his routine of training and strength training. The rest of the members of the sports club could not start training, and they just stood and watched as Cabin trained. During training, Cabin wanted to drink water but he was greatly distracted by the looks of the girls outside. Kaben asked Jun to drive away her fans because they were making him unable to train properly, to which Jun said that they weren't her fans. After training, Jun went to the dining room with her friends, and now Kaben began to irritate her very much. Lee, Siho, and Sohi did not understand what happened to Jun, and they decided to find out from her what happened to her. Jun told the girls that after Sohi cut Kaben's hair, Kaben began to attract too many of her fans and she was worried that very soon all her fans would leave Kaben. Lee didn't understand why Jun was telling them about her fans, to which Jun said that she couldn't show her true emotions in front of them, and she needed her emotions for someone else, which she wasn't so ashamed of. Jun then told Sohi that she must now surpass Kaben through training, and that from now on Kaben is officially her main rival. Lee then remembered that it had been a long time since Sohi started working out, so she decided to find out how her training was going 
and so he said that she felt like she had lost some weight. Then Jun intervened in the conversation, and said that Sivhi tries her best in training, and does not feel sorry for herself. However, Jun said that she didn't see any change in Sohi after all this training, which made Sohi very upset. Jun also said that she carefully monitors Soha's training, and she said that Soha's weight and physique have not changed at all during her training, which surprised Jun. Sohi was very upset that her training did not yield any results, and then Lee and Siho began to support her and tell her that she was not fat at all. Lee also reminded Sohi that she gave Kaben a very good haircut and Lee wondered if Kaben looked much better after the haircut. Suki said that after she cut Kaben's hair, he suddenly became more popular with girls. While Sohi was talking, she suddenly became silent and remembered the moment when she first saw Kaben's face. Lee noticed that Sohi was lost in thought, so she decided to shout at Sohi as loudly as possible to distract her from her thoughts. Suki thought that it was enough for her to look at Kaben just once, and an inexplicable tickling appeared in her chest. Previously, Suhi saw Kaben as an ordinary guy who helps her in training. However, it was only after Suki cut Kaben's hair that she noticed that he had a very pleasant voice. Suki also felt that Kaben could be a kind person, and she didn't understand why she only thought good things about Kaben. Meanwhile, Siho told the girls that from now on, every time her hair grows, she would get her hair cut by Suha. Lee also wanted Suhi to also cut his younger brother's hair, who had a very thick beard and Jun was surprised that Lee's little brother had a thick beard. At this point, Suki told the girls that Kaben seemed cute to her even before she cut his hair, as she really liked the way Kaben's beard blew in the wind. The girls were surprised that Suhi spoke so much and so positively about Kaben, and they decided that Suhi had fallen in love with Kaben. However, Suki herself immediately began to deny and tell the girls that all of this was not true, and that she was not at all in love with Kaben. While Suhi's friends tried to bring her to her senses, two girls standing nearby looked at Suhi with contempt. One day, Suki was already late for her next lesson at the sports club, because one of the teachers asked her to help, and Suki could not refuse the teacher, and she had to help the teacher. While Suki was in a hurry to the sports club, she again remembered Kaben's trimmed face, which is why the heart in her chest beat more and more every time. While Suki was running along the corridor, she heard women's voices in one of the offices saying very unpleasant things about Suki. Suki stopped to listen in on the conversation, and she heard two girls talking about how sick they were of looking at Suki. The girls in the office didn't like how Suki started trying to change just to supposedly try to please Gaben. Despite how disgusted Suha was to listen to all this, she still continued to eavesdrop, barely holding back her tears. At that moment, Gaben passed by and noticed that there was something wrong with Suki. While Suki could not explain to Gaben what had happened to her, Gaben also heard the girls in the office, who still continued to insult Suki. As a result, Gaben opened the office door and told the girls to stop insulting Suki right now. The girls in the office did not expect Gaben to hear their conversations, and Gaben told them that they had no right to say such nasty things about Suka. Gaben also told the girls that their insult to Suki was equivalent to an insult to the entire sports club, and if he heard something like that from them again, he would make them regret what they said. The girls were somewhat frightened, and they were about to leave the office as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Suki thanked Gaben for standing up for her, and she began to blame herself for not being able to do anything on her own. Gaben told Suki not to put herself down, and he told her that she was doing great in training. Then Suki asked Gaben how he could so easily stand up for such a stranger as she, who could not even repay him in any way for his kindness. However, Gaben told Suki that she was a very important person for him, for whom he did not need any reason to protect. Such words made Suki very embarrassed, after which she bowed before Gaben and thanked him. Gaben believed that Suki thought that he loved her, and in order to get out of this awkward situation, he told Suki that he treats all members of the sports club this way. After this, Suki suggested that Gaben came here because she was late for a long time and he started looking for her. But Gaben himself said that the reason for his arrival was completely different. After that, Gaben handed Suhi a note in which June wrote to Gaben that she had hidden all his protein and would return it only if he defeated her in a fair fight. After this, Gaben's face became more angry and intimidating and he asked Suha where Jun might be now. So he remembered that Jun said that Gaben was now her enemy, whom she wanted to give special training to, and so he told Gaben that she was now sitting in the seventh office. A couple of minutes later, Gaben headed to the seventh office, 
at the other end of which Jun was sitting and waiting for his arrival. Jun was ready to fight Gaben, but when she saw him paired with Suhi, Jun was very indignant. Jun reminded Gaben that she asked him to come alone in the note, and Suhi told Jun that she was not going to participate in their fight. Jun told Gaben that she was not completely confident in her victory and she would be very ashamed if someone saw her defeat. Less than a minute later, Gaben held the upside-down June's legs and told her that if she wasn't sure of her victory, then she shouldn't have had this battle. June was very ashamed of her behavior and asked Gaben not to tell anyone about this incident, but Gaben was not going to remain silent, and soon everyone at school was talking about June's loss against Gaben. The next day, Kim woke up with long and unkempt hair, which scared his sister very much. When his sister told Kim to cut his hair, Kim said that he didn't know how to do it, causing his older sister to call Kim weak-minded. Kim also said that he doesn't know whether to continue dyeing his hair blonde or dye his hair black this time. Then the older sister also became interested in what would change if Kim dyed her hair black or blonde. Kim's older sister felt that if Kim continued to dye his hair blonde, he would continue to be perceived as a bully. However, if Kim dyes his hair dark this time, everyone will think that Kim and his older sister are twins. Then the older sister told Kim that he could do whatever he wanted with his hair, after which she asked Kim to leave her with his unkempt hair as soon as possible. A couple of hours later Kim went bowling with his friends to relax and unwind a little. While Kim was making his throw, he decided to ask his friends what he should do with his hair. One of Kim's friends reminded him that Lee once told him that dark hair would look great on him but Kim believed that he had previously dyed his hair blonde, which would make him feel weird with dark hair. At this moment, Kim's friend was no longer listening to him, and he concentrated all his attention on his bowling ball. Thanks to his concentration on the throw, Kim's friend was able to knock down all the pins with one throw. Afterwards, Kim and her friends left the bowling alley and headed to a karaoke bar, where they chose a song they wanted to sing together. While Kim and his friends were choosing the next song, one of Kim's friends noticed that a new message had arrived on his phone. When Kim took out his phone, he saw that he had received a message from Siho, which made his friends very interested. Then Kim's friends began to joke about the fact that it was Kim's hooligan image that made him quite popular among girls, which Kim himself did not really like. After karaoke, Kim and her friends went to a nearby restaurant where they were going to have a little snack. When Kim and his friends sat down at their table, Three girls sat at the next table and ordered a lot of drinks. Kim's friends looked at the girls at the next table and dreamed of quickly becoming adults so they could also drink as much as they wanted. Kim told his friends that there was nothing good about drinking because it tasted very bad, and one of Kim's friends started making jokes about the fact that Kim had already drunk once. Then Kim told his friends about how his older sister and her friend Kong got together at home to drink. When Kim returned home that evening, he was very angry with his sister and her friend, and he wanted to get his sister's friend out of the house as soon as possible. However, when Kim returned home, Kong immediately began inviting him to have a few drinks with them. However, Kim completely refused such an offer, since he was still underage and could not drink. Despite all her refusals, Kong still gave Kim a small glass and poured him some drinks so that he would at least try it. At that moment, Kim thought that since he had already been given a drink— he should try it at least once. A few seconds later, under pressure from his older sister and her friend, Kim finally drank everything that was poured for him in one go. When Kim finally finished his drink, Khan decided to ask him if he liked the drink. At this moment, Kim experienced an extremely disgusting and burning sensation in his mouth and throat, while his older sister and Khan simply looked at him and laughed at him. When Kim told his friends this story, they immediately began to look at Kim with very envious eyes. Kim was unhappy that his friends began to envy the fact that Kim was able to drink in the company of pretty girls, and they only wanted to be in his place even more. After the restaurant, Kim and her friends decided that it was already dark outside, and everyone decided to go home. When Kim's friends left, he again thought about what to do with his hair and he was even more stressed by the fact that he had never asked such questions that related to his appearance before. At one point, Kim noticed that one of his friends still hadn't gone home, and that friend noticed that Kim had started thinking about his hair again. Kim didn't understand how his friend knew about this, to which his friend told him that when Kim thinks about his hair, his facial expression changes dramatically, 
and his friend again noticed how Kim's face changed. Kim said that he himself does not understand why today he thinks so much about such petty things as appearance. Then Kim's friend looked at him and told him that he knew why Kim was now starting to be interested in such things, and he said that Kim just had a crush on Lee and was trying to get her to like him. Hearing this, Kim tried in every possible way to prove to his friend that he was not at all in love with Lee. However, Kim's friend told him that he took Lee's words too seriously that dark hair would suit him, since Kim does not pay any attention to the words of other people about his appearance. Then Kim told his friend that it was all one big misunderstanding, and if he raised this topic again, Kim would kill him. After that, Kim went home in a somewhat spoiled mood, trying not to pay attention to his friend. The next day, Kim still went to the hairdresser, since he already understood that he could no longer postpone the question of his hairstyle. Once at the hairdresser's, Kim immediately sat down at the chair and his hairdresser asked him what hairstyle Kim was going to do today. Before the hairstylist began working on Kim's hair, Kim said that he wanted the hairstyle to be as simple and relaxed as possible. Kim also said that he would like his hairstyle to be as similar as possible to the hairstyle of Hyun Young from One Boy Group after which the hairdresser chuckled a little and got to work. As soon as the hairdresser finished working on Kim's hair, he had a very neat and well-groomed dark hairstyle on his head. On the way to school, Kim tried to convince himself that he did this hairstyle not because Lee would have liked it, but because he himself had long wanted to do it. At one point, Kim realized that such things had never happened to him before, and he realized that something was wrong with him now. One unknown guy with a blue haircut, and wearing sunglasses was walking towards Junsio's school. Having reached the school, the stranger saw Kim, and the stranger wanted to ask him something. Coming closer to Kim, the stranger asked if he knew Kim Wujun, after which he described him as blonde with piercings and a mole under his eye. When Kim turned to face the stranger, the stranger looked into Kim's face and realized that this was the same Kim Wujun he was looking for, and who looked a little different, than he thought. The stranger could not believe that the man in front of him was actually the same Kim Woojin he was looking for. The stranger told Kim that his appearance was very different from what he expected to see when they first met. Kim tried to convince the stranger that he had never actually behaved like that, and Kim wanted to know what kind of guy he was. The guy told Kim that they actually knew each other, after which he told Kim that his shoelaces had come undone. When Kim lowered his head to check his shoelaces, the other guy immediately tried to hit Kim, but Kim successfully dodged the blow. Despite the unsuccessful first blow, the stranger tried to hit Kim a couple more times, but these blows did not hurt Kim in any way. When the stranger stopped trying to attack Kim, Kim told him that he was an extremely bad fighter since he could not hit him even once. However, the stranger did not pay attention to Kim's remarks, and he told him that he wanted to fight him. Despite this proposal, Kim firmly and confidently told the stranger that he was not going to fight, as he was in a hurry to go to school. However, the stranger did not care at all that Kim's classes would soon begin, and he ordered him to attack. But Kim told the stranger that he didn't want to fight now, and he invited him to see him together when his lessons were over, after which Kim went to school, leaving the stranger all alone. As soon as Kim entered the classroom, Everyone came up to him and began discussing his new hairstyle with him. At this point, so he approached Lee as quickly as possible and said that Kim had changed a lot. As soon as Lee saw Kim's new image, she was almost speechless because she was so surprised. Through the crowd surrounding Kim, Lee saw Kim at his desk and he decided to greet her. However, Kim was very surprised when he saw the dissatisfied and incredulous expression on Lee's face. Kim didn't understand why Lee looked at him with such condemnation, since he himself remembers that Lee herself told him that this new hair color would suit him. Meanwhile, throughout the school everyone was talking about how Kim Woojing had dyed his hair dark, and Siho wanted to see Kim's new look as soon as possible. Less than a minute later, Siho reached Kim's office and couldn't help but stare at Kim's new hair color. Siho told Kim that this dark hair color suits him much better than his previous blonde hair. Siho also told Kim that Kim also had dark hair in elementary school, which made her even more pleased to see her old friend's new look. Also, Siho and several girls thought that Kim seemed to look like some kind of celebrity, but no one could remember who exactly Kim was very similar to. At this point, Lee immediately shouted to the girls that Kim looked a lot like Hyun Young from a boy group. Lee immediately scared all the girls away and told them that Kim could not possibly be like Hyun Young. Then Lee was a little upset because Kim now looked not like the yellow-haired anchovy she was so used to, 
but like a dark-haired anchovy. Soon classes began at school, during which everyone was very hot from the bright sun. The heat made Lee feel unwell and she was very sleepy, but she knew that she needed to concentrate on the lessons since her exams would start soon. Kim told Lee that if she wanted to sleep, she could take a nap during class and after class he would let her copy everything he wrote. In response, Lee said that she did not want to sleep at all, and that she believed that Kim did not listen well enough to the teacher in class and was writing everything down so that she could copy it from him later. However, Kim told Lee that he was a little better at taking notes than she was, since Kim's grades were higher than Lee's. Then Lee asked Kim if he was worried that if she actively copied from Kim, her grades might become higher than Kim's. However, Kim said that if someone else did it, he would become jealous, but he believed that if Lee copied from him, he would not care. Then Lee lay down on the desk and said that if Kim didn't let her cheat, she would severely punish him, and after a couple of minutes Lee fell asleep. When Lee fell asleep, she saw that she was at a concert of Hyun Young and his group. While watching the concert, Lee shouted louder than anyone that she loved Hyun Young very much. A few minutes into the concert, Another Hyun Young came on stage and apologized to the audience for being so late. Lee couldn't believe that there were two Hyun Youngs on stage at once, and she couldn't even tell if it was good or bad. Meanwhile, the second Hyun Young said that he actually knew that he would be late for his concert today, so he called his friend who looked a lot like him to help. Lee didn't understand anything, and she especially didn't understand who had been performing on stage all this time instead of the real Hyun Young. At this moment, the first Hyun Young who performed on stage took off the piece of paper that was hiding his birthmark, and it turned out to be Kim. Lee was very frightened, and from fright she even suddenly woke up screaming and sweating. When Lee woke up, Kim told her that the lesson was long over. Lee was disappointed that she slept through free class, and she told Kim that he should have woken her up during free class. However, Kim said that he wanted to wake Lee up, but he felt that since she was sleeping so well, he shouldn't wake her up. Kim believed that Lee was dreaming about something good and pleasant, but Lee said that the second middle of the dream was more like a kind of nightmare. When Lee asked Kim where all the other students were, Kim told her that all the other students had long since left for their next class. After that, Kim was silent for a while and was about to ask Lee something. Suddenly Kim turned to face Lee and asked her if black hair looked good on him. Lee was a little scared by this question, and Kim reminded her that she herself had said that dark hair would look good on him. Kim also told and embarrassed Lee that she hadn't told him anything about his new hair color all day. Kim also told Lee that if such hair does not suit him, then she can honestly tell him about it. But Lee interrupted Kim and told him that black hair looks good on him. Kim was very surprised that Lee so easily told him that dark hair suited him. Kim didn't understand why Lee couldn't tell him this sooner, and he assumed that Lee was just telling him out of politeness. But Lee said that Kim really suited himself with dark hair. Kim told Lee that he wouldn't be upset if his hair didn't really suit him, and this assertiveness was starting to scare Lee herself a little. In the end, Lee simply could not stand it and ran away from Kim, telling him that dark hair suited him and she asked Kim not to ask him about it anymore. While Lee ran away, she tried to convince herself that Kim was not at all like her beloved Hyun Young. Meanwhile, the guy who was looking for Kim to fight in the morning actually decided to wait for Kim to finish his classes so that he could fight him. After class, Kim wondered if his new look with dark hair really suited him. Kim also thought about why everyone except Lee liked his new hair color. At one point, Kim noticed that Lee had already gone home without him and he decided that it was time for him to go home too. However, by chance, Kim saw the same unfamiliar guy with blue hair who pestered him this morning. Then Kim decided that if he wanted to avoid another meeting with the blue-haired guy, then he should leave the school on the other side so as not to run into that guy. At that moment, a few steps away from Kim was Siho, who wanted to catch up with Kim and go home together. When Kim left school, one big guy wanted to call him, but Kim didn't pay any attention to this guy. When Kim wanted to pass by the guy, he stopped him so he could talk to Kim. First the big guy told Kim that at first he didn't even recognize Kim, after which the guy started smoking. Then Kim assumed that this big one came here with that blue-haired guy. At that moment, the same blue-haired guy who wanted to fight with Kim in the morning came running to Kim. After that, the blue-haired guy approached Kim and told him that it would be indecent of Kim if he just left since this guy had been waiting for him all day. When the blue-haired guy spoke to Kim, the big guy pulled the cigarette out of his teeth and threw it at Kim. After that, Kim and the unfamiliar guys headed towards the construction site, 
where they wanted to sort everything out with Kim. The first thing the big guy did was remind Kim of how Kim had once punched him in the face for no reason. Kim listened to the big guy and couldn't believe that Kim had actually been such a scoundrel before. After that, Kim wanted to find out from the blue-haired guy what he had done to him. Then the blue-haired guy also reminded Kim how he once also beat him for no reason. At this moment, Kim suddenly felt very ashamed of those actions, but he still could not remember these incidents. In his defense, Kim told the guys that they must have done something bad if he had to beat them, and Kim didn't really like this idea. Then the blue-haired guy told Kim that if Kim didn't attack him and start a fight, then this guy would attack him first. Kim did not pay attention to the blue-haired guy's threats, and he asked him what he needed to do, that they both left him behind and he could calmly go home. The guys didn't understand what was wrong with Kim, and for a moment they thought that they had simply confused this guy with Kim. However, one of the guys was absolutely sure that this guy was Kim when he noticed Kim's mole under his eye. Then one of the guys told Kim that if he was really sorry, he should get on his knees. In less than a second, Kim knelt in front of those guys, hoping that they would forgive him and let him go. Seeing how obediently Kim knelt down, the guys also told Kim to bow his head to the ground. Kim did not offer any resistance to these guys, and he also easily lowered his head to the ground. Later, the blue-haired guy took out his phone and told Kim that if he crawled between his legs, they would forgive him and let him go home. And Kim actually crawled between the blue-haired guy's legs, while the blue-haired guy started filming him with his phone camera and mocking him at how pathetic and helpless Kim was. At this moment, Siho was watching everything that was happening with Kim, and she did not know what to do in such a situation. Last night, while Kim was with her friends, Siho texted Kim that she noticed how Kim had changed a lot lately. Sure, Siho was very happy with how Kim decided to stop fighting and change for the better, but she was worried that something had happened to Kim for him to change so suddenly. However, Kim wrote to Siho that everything was fine with him, and he realized what an idiot he was before, and he decided for himself that it was time for him to become a normal person. Siho understood that Kim wanted to change and stop fighting, but it was hard for her to watch a couple of guys bully Kim so easily. At the end, the blue-haired guy gave Kim one last blow and told him that Kim could go now. While Kim was getting ready to go home, the two guys kept laughing at Kim and saying that there was clearly something wrong with him. Before Kim could take a step, he felt someone hit Kim on the head with all his might with an iron pipe from behind. Siho was very scared, and she still didn't know what to do in this difficult situation. At that moment, the stranger shouted to those guys who were mocking Kim why they decided to let him go so easily. The guy with the iron pipe, who looked somewhat like Kim, told Kim that today would be the end of him. At one point, the guy with the iron pipe heard Kim suddenly start laughing, and the guy asked Kim why he suddenly laughed. At this moment, Kim tried to get to his feet, telling himself that he really wasn't living in the best way to suddenly find himself in this situation so suddenly. Then Kim thought that even if he wanted to change completely, the world around him would remain the same. Then Kim asked the guy with the iron pipe what he should do to forgive him. After that, Kim stood up in front of the guy with the iron pipe and told him that if he wanted to beat him up and take out all his anger on him, then so be it. As soon as Kim was able to get to his feet, the guy with the iron pipe swung his pipe once and hit Kim in the face with all his might. As Kim fell to the ground again, the guy with the iron pipe told Kim that he was being beaten now not because he had once done something wrong in his life. The guy with the iron pipe pointed out to Kim the big guy and said that that time Kim beat him up because this guy asked Kim for a cigarette and started looking for a fight. After that, the guy with the iron pipe told Kim that the blue-haired guy ran into Kim when he wanted to take revenge for his friend, who once bullied one of the outcasts. Then the guy with the iron pipe told Kim that Kim had never started a fight first before from which Kim created the image of a tough guy who protects the weak. However, the guy with the iron pipe said that he began to get very annoyed by this image of Kim, and he told him that he would beat him up because he simply did not like Kim. However, Kim was not at all frightened by these words, and he simply stood in front of the guy with the iron pipe, spreading his arms to the sides, letting him know that he was ready to be beaten. The guy with the iron pipe, without thinking twice, readied his pipe again to beat Kim as hard as possible with it. However, at the very last moment, Siho appeared between Kim and the guy with the iron pipe, who wanted the guy with the iron pipe to stop right now. Kim didn't understand how Siho could be here, and he also didn't understand what she was doing. A little later, Kim noticed that Siho was shaking very much, 
and he knew that Siho was not strong enough to protect him on her own. This realization made it even more difficult for Kim to understand why Siho decided to help him. Then the guy with the iron pipe told Siho to get out of here right now as quickly as possible. Also, the guy with the iron pipe told Siho that he wouldn't even care about the fact that there was a girl in front of him, and he was ready to hit her. Suddenly for everyone, Siho began to cry and asked the guy with the iron pipe to stop all this disgrace right now. The guy with the iron pipe and his friends didn't understand why Siho immediately started crying, and they didn't know what to do with her to calm her down. One day, Siho asked Kim to go for a walk together, and Kim said that he was not going to go for a walk today, and told Siho to get together with her friends and for them to walk together without him. It was on that day that the same guy with the iron pipe saw Siho for the first time. On the same day, this guy with the iron pipe also saw Kim for the first time, and at first glance, he didn't like Kim. That day, Siho was very upset that Kim wasn't paying any attention to her, and then the guy with the iron pipe wanted to know what happened to her. Siho told the guy with the iron pipe that Kim told her that he didn't like her, which made Siho very upset. Meanwhile, the two girls weren't paying any attention to Siho, and they started discussing with each other what kind of food would be in the cafeteria today. Then Siho suddenly took her shoe and threw it towards those girls and asked them to shut up, which greatly surprised both those girls and the guy with the iron pipe. After class, the guy with the iron pipe got together with his friends to discuss a plan with them. When everyone had gathered, the guy with the iron pipe suggested that the three of his friends deal with Kim. However, the friends of the guy with the iron pipe laughed at their friends and said that this was not the best idea. The blue-haired guy reminded everyone that Kim once alone was able to deal with 15 bullies at the same time and that Kim even fought with Dohayan. Then the guy with the iron pipe told his friends that Kim lost in a fight with Dohayan, from which it could be concluded that Kim could still be defeated. The big guy said that the fact was that there was no way they could beat Kim, since Kim was on a completely different level to fight with. The blue-haired guy also said that even if they want to unite to defeat Kim, he will easily kill them all. Then the guy took out his iron pipe and told his friends that they wouldn't even have to fight to defeat Kim which scared them very much. Then the friends of the guy with the iron pipe told him that he was crazy, since such actions amounted to a crime. However, the guy with the iron pipe told his friends that all they had to do was lure Kim to some deserted place, where he would beat Kim a little and throw the pipe away. Also, the guy with the iron pipe said that if they were afraid of the law, they could still beat Kim up a little, since he was ready to take full responsibility. Then the friends of the guy with the iron pipe said that if they really didn't go to prison, they were ready to go with him. When the guy with the iron pipe had already mocked Kim a little, Siho still stood in front of him in tears so that he would stop beating the defenseless Kim. The friends of the guy with the iron pipe couldn't understand how Siho ended up here so suddenly. Meanwhile, Siho was still trying to stop the guy with the iron pipe, but that didn't stop him at all. Then the guy with the iron pipe, without any difficulty, simply swung his weapon at Siho in order to get rid of her as quickly as possible and continue beating Kim. However, at the very last second, Kim managed to save Siho and hit the guy with the iron pipe right in the face. Kim's blow was so strong that the guy with the iron pipe simply could not withstand the blow, causing him to fall to the ground and drop his iron pipe. At that moment, Kim grabbed Siho's head and pressed her to him as tightly as possible. The guy with the iron pipe looked at Kim and thought that he deliberately did not hit him with all his might, just to scare him and stop him. After that, the guy with the iron pipe tried to get to his feet and asked Siho why she did all this if this whole situation had nothing to do with her and he could just run away. However, scared half to death, he said that she would not run away, even if they started beating her too. Then the guy with the iron pipe stood up, looked at Siho and thought that he didn't understand anything at all. After that, the guy with the iron pipe walked away and his friends also decided to leave this place as soon as possible. When the guy with the iron pipe and his friends finally left, Siho fell to the ground and started crying even louder. An enraged Kim then started yelling at Siho and asked her why she even intervened. Siho told Kim that he had helped her in similar situations many times before, and she wanted to repay him for his help at least once. Siho also reminded Kim that he himself told her that in order to help a loved one, no reason is needed. Then Siho reminded Kim that he became her very first real friend, and subsequently a very dear person to her, whom she did not want to lose. Suddenly Kim took a closer look at Siho and recognized her as the same girl he had once helped when they were both very young. When Siho was little, 
local boys often picked on her because of her unkempt appearance and the unpleasant smell that came from her one day kim saw how these boys were pestering siho and he decided to help her then kim walked up to one of the boys and hit him on the head as hard as possible as the boys tried to figure out who hit them they saw kim kim told these boys that he is not afraid of them and then these boys simply walked away leaving kim alone with siho when kim wanted to talk to siho she thought that kim was one of those boys who constantly takes money from other children however kim simply asked siho why she allows these boys to constantly bully her siho couldn't answer kim's question and she didn't understand why kim decided to help her kim told siho that he just doesn't like to see anyone hurt others and he told siho that she should now try to fight back against anyone who bullies her kim also told siho that she should never let others bully her however siho said that even if she tried to fight back she was still alone at that moment kim realized that siho had never had friends in his life then kim asked siho to extend her hand to him and siho extended her hand to kim after that kim clenched his hand and siho's hand into a fist after which they bumped their fists but siho still did not understand what kim had just done then kim told siho that he always greets his friends like this and he told siho that they are now friends too and that from now on they should always say hello like that kim also told siho that now if someone offends her she must tell him about it and then kim will definitely deal with those who offend siho when siho asked kim why he was helping her kim told her that in order to help a loved one he doesn't need a reason that's how all friends help each other after the fight kim and siho went to a cafe where siho told kim that she was very glad that kim had not forgotten about her kim also wanted to thank siho for her help by buying her something tasty despite the fact that he had little money but siho refused such gratitude from kim siho then told kim that if he really wanted to thank her he could hang out with her after the exams the next day exams began at school where a bunch of students tried to solve various problems kim had no difficulty in answering most of the questions and tasks in the exam correctly while lee had a very difficult time solving many of the tasks after the exams kim got together with a few friends to discuss how they had solved their assignments then lee suggested that they all have fun together since all their exams were over however despite such a tempting offer kim refused since he already had some plans that he did not want to tell everyone about jung also said that he was busy because he had a soccer game and so he said that she was going to the sports club today lee was surprised by how busy everyone was and then decided that she would hang out with siho however lee was very upset when she learned that siho would not be able to have fun with her today either then lee was beside herself that everyone except her was having fun somewhere without her today meanwhile hanbyul who was training complained that he was very hot it was hard for lee to watch hanbyul train and she told him that if he sits normally he won't feel hot lee then told hanbyul that if he sat down normally or just laid down he would feel better and hanbyul prepared to lie down on the floor however after a second hanbyul began simply doing another exercise while lying down which made it even harder for lee to look at his little brother lee then walked towards hanbyul grabbed his hair and prepared to hit him but hanbyul tried to tell lee that he was just joking after that lee lay down on the sofa thinking that the rest of her friends still had exams at one point lee became very bored and decided to watch tv to relieve her boredom a little however when lee turned on the tv and saw the face of her beloved hyun yum she immediately remembered kim's face then lee began to punish herself for accidentally remembering kim's face and instead of supporting hanbyul she only asked her older sister to be a little quieter at this moment lee became even more bored and then she completely did not know what to do meanwhile kim stood outside and waited for siho to come so they could take a walk together a couple of minutes later a dressed-up siho arrived who was very ashamed of being late after that siho asked kim how long he had to wait for her to come out of politeness kim told siho that he had just arrived here but siho noticed how much kim had managed to sweat while he was waiting for her to arrive kim decided to take a closer look at siho and he couldn't believe that siho was really so beautiful kim also couldn't believe that he had once helped this girl when she was still a little girl kim also couldn't understand why siho decided to dress up like that when he was already hot in just a t-shirt a couple of minutes later kim and siho decided to go to a cafe to cool off there a little and already there siho suggested that kim go see a movie together kim suggested that siho go and watch a movie about an alien girlfriend 
since many of Kim's friends had already seen the movie and they were all excited about the movie. Then Siho grabbed Kim's phone and said that this was a good option, but she said that she had a better idea. After a couple of seconds, Siho showed Kim a poster for a horror movie about ghosts, and Siho said that she had been wanting to go see this movie for a long time. Siho figured that if she and Kim went to see a horror movie, she could pretend she was scared and then she could snuggle up to Kim thereby showing him her sweet side. An hour later, a horror movie screening began, which Siho wanted to attend with Kim. While watching, he constantly changed his position, which made Siho think that Kim was scared. Siho decided to ask Kim if he was scared of this movie, but Kim said that he wasn't scared at all. With each scene, the ghost on the screen became more and more attractive. Despite this, Kim was still very scared and out of fear he shrank and wanted to cuddle up to Siho so that he wouldn't be so scared. Siho didn't understand what was wrong with Kim, and she thought that Kim was scared after all, which made her cute to watch Kim's behavior. When the credits started rolling, the first thing Kim thought about was that he wouldn't be able to sleep well alone tonight. For a moment, Kim thought it would be a good idea to ask to sleep with his sister, but he knew that his sister probably wouldn't let him sleep in the same room as her. Then Kim thought that he should invite Shu Hyun to spend the night, but Kim thought that if he invited Shu Hyun to spend the night, he would think that Kim was crazy for inviting the guy to stay with him for the night. When the movie finally ended, Siho told Kim that it was time for them to move on. After the movie, Kim and Siho went to a restaurant where they decided to have dinner together. During dinner, Siho couldn't stop laughing at Kim for being so afraid of ghosts. In response, Kim told Siho that a human was easy to deal with since it was enough to simply beat him. But this technique would not work with a ghost since a ghost was much more difficult to catch. Then Siho laughed even harder at Kim's thinking, who believed that since a person could be easily beaten, he would be less dangerous than a ghost. Then Kim said that if a maniac runs after him, he can simply neutralize him. At that moment, Kim remembered the Lee family, and he felt that he was unlikely to be able to cope with a maniac of such a physique. Then Kim told Siho that everything also depends on the opponent himself and he said that it would be difficult to deal with a creature that may look like a person, but at the same time it will not be a person. After dinner at the restaurant, Kim went with Siho to the slot machines, in one of which Kim tried to get a plush toy for Siho. With great effort, Kim finally managed to get a plush toy for Siho. After the slot machines, Kim and Siho headed to a karaoke bar, where they also had a lot of fun. After the karaoke bar, Kim and Siho went shopping, where they looked at clothes for each other. At one point, Siho wanted to ask Kim if one of the swimsuits she had chosen was suitable for her, but due to excessive shyness, Kim could not answer Siho. After shopping, Kim and Siho went to a photo booth where they took some photos together. After that, Kim decided to walk Siho home, and she was very grateful to Kim for this fun evening. Siho also said that she was very happy that she met Kim again as she really wanted this to happen. Afterwards, Siho asked Kim if she had changed a lot over the years, since she had put a lot of effort into it. Siho told Kim that she was very happy when she became his friend, and she came every day just to see him since he was the only one who treated her well. Many children did not understand why Kim was friends with Siho while the other children tried to avoid her. Then Siho said that she was very unusual that such a strong and tough guy like Kim was friends with such a pathetic and unremarkable girl like her. One day, Siho's father's business began to bring him a lot of income, and soon Siho and his family had to move. Siho was very happy that after so many years she was able to come back and see Kim again and she asked him if she was right for him now that she had changed so much. Kim then told Siho that she greatly overestimated him, and he said that he was not that cool since he only helped Siho because it was more convenient for him. Afterwards, Kim thanked Siho for always seeing him as a good person. Kim also told Siho that she shouldn't think so much about how people perceive her, as he believed that she should perceive herself for who she really is. Then Siho realized that Kim really didn't notice any significant meanings in her, despite the fact that she had been letting Kim know about it for a long time. Siho told Kim that if she only wanted to be friends with Kim, then she wouldn't worry about her appearance. Siho also said that even though Kim was her first friend, she had feelings for him that were more than just friendship. Kim still didn't understand what Siho was saying, and he wanted to find out from her what exactly she meant. Then Siho asked Kim what he thought of her, not as a friend, 
but as a girlfriend. Kim was at a loss because he really had no idea that Siho might like him. Siho said that she is very sensitive about dating boys because she was often picked on by other girls in middle school because of it. Siho also said that since then she tries not to act too friendly towards other guys unless she feels some kind of serious interest in them. Siho said that it is for this reason that she tries to talk to Kim first and acts as friendly as possible with him. Siho told Kim that she wanted to confess her feelings to him only when they became a little closer to each other, but she could not remain silent for that long, as she felt some kind of mental anxiety. Siho also told Kim that she was very worried about Lee becoming his girlfriend. Kim still didn't understand why Siho was so worried about being so close friends with Lee. Siho said that Lee was the only person who was able to intervene in Kim's fight with Dohayan, and after that fight, Kim began to spend even more time with Lee. Siho also reminded Kim of the time when he twisted his ankle at school games, and while she did not know what to do, Lee immediately helped Kim and supported him. Even when Kim was attacked by a guy with an iron pipe, Siho thought it would be better to call Lee for help, but she couldn't do that, but she couldn't sit idly by either. Siho then began to cry, and she asked Kim for forgiveness for that incident since she believed that it was because of her that Kim could have been in even more danger. With each passing second, Siho cried even more, and she began to say more and more unpleasant things about herself, but Kim began to try to calm Siho down. Sayo then said that she knew that Kim was showing some interest in Lee since he decided to dye his hair dark, since it was Lee who said that it would make him look much better. Despite this, Siho couldn't keep all her feelings inside and she finally told Kim that she really liked him. After Siho went home, Kim immediately called his friend Shuryun and suggested that he go to his house for a sleepover as soon as possible since his sister allowed him to come over. At first, Kim told Sihian that at first his sister was against Sihian coming to them, since she would not be very comfortable with the fact that they had some stranger at home. However, when Kim asked his sister to spend one night together in the same room, Jun told Kim to call Sihian right now and invite him to join them. Then Shuhyun told Kim that he was not going to sleep with Kim in the same room, after which Shuhyun was about to hang up. Before Shuhyun hung up, Kim told him that he wanted to talk to him about a very important topic, and Shuhyun thought that Kim was just trying to make fun of him. After that, Kim briefly told Shuhyun what happened with Siho and Shuryun said that he would come to him soon to discuss the matter in more detail. A few minutes later, Shuryun was already at Kim's apartment, where Kim and Jun greeted him warmly. When Shuryun entered the apartment, all he could think about was that he wouldn't be able to sleep until Kim told him all the details of his walk with Siho. Seeing Sihian for the first time in a long time, Jun was surprised at how Sihian grew up and grew such hair. Sihian told Jun that he was happy to see her too, and he told her that short hair suited her very well. After that, Sihian handed Jun a bag of all kinds of cheesecakes, and Jun was very pleased with Sihian's manners and attentiveness. However, at the same moment, Kim did not understand why Shuhyun did not bring any of his cakes for him, from which Kim began to consider himself somewhat disadvantaged, since it was he who invited Shuhyun to their home. After that, Jun immediately started eating the cheesecakes while Shuhyun took Kim to his room to hear the story that happened between Kim and Siho as soon as possible. When Kim and Shuhyun entered the room, Shuhyun still shared his cheesecake with Kim so that he would calm down and finally tell Shuhyun everything that happened to him. Shuhyun could no longer stand Kim telling him everything, and he directly told him what had finally happened to him. In the end, Kim finally told Shuhyun everything that happened to him with Siho and Shuryun couldn't believe that such a beautiful girl like Siho had been in love with a guy like Kim since childhood. At that moment, Jun heard everything through the walls, and suddenly she also began to wonder what her younger brother was talking about with Shuryun. Then Jun leaned against the wall of Kim's room in order to hear everything that Kim and Shuryun were talking about as best as possible. Shuryun still couldn't believe that such a beautiful girl like Siho had been in love with a guy like Kim since childhood and Shuhyun wanted to hear all the details from Kim. When Jun heard who Kim was talking about with Shuhyun, she immediately took out her phone to find the same Siho they were talking about among Kim's Instagram followers. Having found Siho's profile, Jun was shocked that such a beautiful girl actually showed sympathy for Kim. Kim and Sihyun heard that something was wrong with Kim's older sister, so Kim decided to check if Jun was okay. When Kim opened the door to his room, he saw that his sister was just fooling around with herself. When Kim closed the door to his room, Jun believed that Kim did not realize that she was eavesdropping on them, 
and she returned to the wall of Kim's room to continue eavesdropping on Kim's conversation with Shir Hyun. When Shir Hyun asked Kim if his sister was okay, and Kim said that lately his sister was only thinking about her studies, and Kim believed that it was because of her studies that his sister had gone a little crazy. After that, Kim told Shir Hyun everything in detail, from the attack by the guy with the iron pipe to the moment when Siho told him that she had been in love with him since childhood. Sehian understood that Kim was now a little confused by this situation, and he suggested that Kim try to meet with Siho several times to find out for sure whether she was right for him or not. Then Kim thought that he really should try to meet Siho, since he believed that Siho was indeed very beautiful and attractive. However, Kim said that he doesn't have any special feelings for Siho yet and this statement really excited Jun. Kim again heard that something was wrong with Jun, and when he opened the door, his sister again tried to pretend that she had not heard anything from their room. When Kim closed the door to his room, Jun ran to the wall of Kim's room as quickly as possible to continue eavesdropping on his conversations with Shir Hyun. However, Kim opened the door again to check on his sister, and Jun again began to pretend that she was not eavesdropping on them hoping that Kim would not suspect her of being a spy. When Kim returned to the conversation with Shir Hyun, Shir Hyun believed that Jun was ill, to which Kim only said that, looking at her, he wanted to go to university less and less. Shir Hyun then reminded Kim that he still suspected that Kim was secretly in love with Lee, despite the fact that Kim tried his best to deny this assumption. At this moment, Jun took out her phone again to find Lee among Kim's followers on Instagram since she did not understand how there could be so many girls around her brother. Having found Lee's Instagram page, Jun thought that at first glance Lee was also a very pretty girl. After that, Jun went to the page and saw several photos of her. Later, Jun was surprised at how strong and toned Lee had. After that, Jun tried to remember where else she could have seen Lee. A couple of seconds later, Jun remembered how Kim once came with this girl, after which one huge guy came for her whom Lee almost immediately hit in the face. Then Jun thought that she had completely forgotten about that girl precisely because of the guy who came for her. Then Jun immediately remembered that when Kim first came home with this girl, he said with a smile on his face that this girl was his friend. Then Jun tried to understand on her own who Kim liked and who he was dating, but in trying to understand everything, Jun only became more confused in her thoughts. At the same time, Jun thought that relationships between schoolchildren like Kim's were a very difficult thing to understand. Then Kim remembered Siho's words that she was seriously worried that at one point Lee would be able to lure Kim away. After that, Kim remembered the moment when, after a walk, Shir Hyun began to suspect that Kim really liked Lee. Kim also recalled one of the moments when Lee also began to suspect that Kim was in love with her. Kim could not believe that he behaved in such a way that from the outside it seemed that he was really in love with Lee. Then Kim seriously thought about what he really felt for Lee. Previously, Kim had repeatedly followed Lee in order to once again compete with her in some competition. Also, Kim could not forget how he first met the entire Lee family and remembering those events made Kim extremely uncomfortable. Kim also looked at Shuyun and thought about the fact that after him Lee became another extremely close friend to her. It was after meeting Lee that Kim first realized that you could have so much fun with a girl. Kim also realized that Lee was the first girl who was able to give him such a range of new emotions, and with whom he had so many unusual events. At one point, Kim simply stood up and told Sihyun that he couldn't think about such things anymore. After that, Kim came out of his room as he wanted to take a little walk and Sihyun said that he would also like to take a little walk and get some fresh air. Shihyun told Jun that they would like to go for a short walk, which made Jun very upset, since she would not be able to continue eavesdropping on Kim's conversation with Shihyun. During the walk, Kim thought about the fact that all he used to do was take out all his emotions in a fight. Then Kim suggested that before he was like this because before that all his anger accumulated only in relation to those people who deprived him of the person closest to him. Kim also assumed that he had been holding a grudge against himself all this time due to the fact that he simply did not notice everything that brought the person dear to him to death. In any case, Kim believed that he was the kind of person who did not want to think about the past and for whom fighting became the only way to relieve his inner pain. However, Kim also realized that the more he tried to rid himself of this pain through fights, the more people turned away from him, which only made Kim's life more difficult. Kim felt like he was in a kind of swamp, which only dragged him further to the very bottom. But despite all this, Lee became for Kim the very person who was able to pull him out of this swamp, 
and it was she who prevented Kim from completely destroying himself. While Kim and Shi Hyun were walking down the street, Kim suggested that Shi Hyun go to the store together to eat ice cream together. When Kim and Si Hyun wanted to enter the store, they met Lee with a bag of groceries and ice cream in his mouth. Kim did not expect to see Lee in such a place at such a time, and he began to be filled with mixed and ambiguous emotions. Lee immediately greeted Kim and Si Hyun to which Sihian only told her that she should either eat her ice cream or take it out of her mouth and talk normally. When Kim greeted Lee, she only asked Shi Hyun what he was doing here at such a time, since his house was in another area. Shi Hyun told Lee that Kim wanted to consult him about something very important, and so he stayed with Kim tonight, and Lee suddenly wondered what Kim wanted to consult with Shi Hyun about. Shi Hyun did not reveal to Lee all the details of his conversation with Kim and he only said that he and Kim talked about relationships, and Kim did not like that Shi Hyun revealed the topic of their conversation to Lee. Then Shi Hyun suggested that Kim consult with Lee, since Shi Hyun believed that girls were better versed in the topic of relationships, and Lee said that girls had excellent intuition. Kim then told Lee that he wasn't sure if he liked one girl. Lee then told Kim that he shouldn't try to convince himself of his feelings and he should just accept his feelings for what they really are. Lee also remembered the words of one person that love is one of the most complex human feelings, and she believed that love is also the most intuitive emotion. Lee also told Kim that exactly what he feels now is the answer to whether he likes a person and whether he wants to become even closer to this person. After this, Lee jokingly said that even such questions need to be explained to her student Kim and she told Kim that he still had a lot to learn. Kim completely agreed with everything Lee told him, and he told her that he really needed to accept his feelings. After that, Kim and Shi Hyun said goodbye to Lee, after which they went to the store for ice cream. When Kim and Si Hyun left the store and went home, Kim told Si Hyun that he thought he liked Lee. Kim was somewhat embarrassed to admit this to Shi Hyun, while Shi Hyun himself only chuckled slightly at Kim's words. After that, Kim and Xiong began to think about how to tell Siho about this so that she would not be offended and would take everything correctly. The next day, Siho came to school, and she couldn't stop thinking about her and Kim's last night. During one of the breaks, Kim finally came to Siho, and she realized that Kim wanted to talk to her. Kim didn't say anything to Siho yet, and they just walked to the roof of the school in silence. As they walked, Siho anticipated a somewhat unpleasant conversation with Kim. While Siho walked with Kim along the corridor, she thought that sooner or later Kim would still pay attention to her, since she believed that they had a special relationship. Siho also remembered the very day when she met Kim for the first time in many years, and she believed that it was fate. With every step, Siho worried more and more, and she hoped that Kim would finally turn her attention to the same Siho who had changed and became a completely different person. However, Siho still had a feeling of anxiety and worry because she believed that only she saw their relationship with Kim as somehow special. When Kim and Siho were on the roof, Kim told Siho that he wouldn't be surprised if Siho would date better guys than him, and he thanked her for her sincere feelings for him. Afterwards, Kim told Siho that he was indeed in love with Lee, after which he apologized to Siho for not being able to accept her feelings and be with her. At this moment, Siho thought that she actually expected this outcome, and that she was not at all upset about this outcome. After this, Siho smiled faintly and thought that now she should act like a cool girl and wish Kim happiness, leaving Kim with good memories. Siho then told Kim with a happy face that she thought so and apologized to him for confessing her feelings to Kim even though she suspected that Kim was already in love with Lee. Siho also told Kim that she wouldn't tell Lee anything since she fully supported Kim's first love. Kim was shocked by Siho's reaction, as he didn't expect Siho to understand him so easily. At this moment, all Siho could think about was that she had actually acted like a real badass. However, Siho still could not contain her real emotions, and she immediately ran away from Kim so that he could not see her tears of despair. After that, Kim was left all alone on the roof, and he felt incredibly embarrassed for everything he had just said to Siho. Meanwhile, Siho ran through the corridor so that no one could see her tears. However, Siho wasn't looking at the road and she accidentally crashed into someone. Siho later noticed that she bumped into Lee, who wanted to find out if Siho was okay. While Lee was trying to figure out what was wrong with Siho, Siho was thinking about how petty and narrow-minded she was. While Siho was trying to calm down, Lee was still trying to understand what had happened to Siho, so that she could help her later. After that, Siho finally pulled herself together 
and told Lee that it had nothing to do with her, while deep down in her heart Siho really hated Lee. At one of the lessons, the students were glad that the school decided to organize a train for all classes. After this, the students were given a travel schedule so that they could familiarize themselves as carefully as possible with where and on what day they would go. While the rest of the students were studying the travel schedule, Kim was trying to write to Siho. In his messages, Kim wrote to Siho that he did not want to end the conversation this way, and he suggested that Siho call him to discuss the situation in more detail. Suddenly, Shuhyun distracted Kim, and he asked him how his conversation with Siho went. Kim told Sihyun that he simply turned down Siho's offer to date. Sihyun told Kim that since Siho had been in love with Kim since childhood, he couldn't just turn her down, to which Kim said that he wanted to continue the conversation but she immediately ran away. Shuhyun also told Kim that after this conversation, Siho quarreled with Lee, and then Kim and Shuhyun believed that now Siho would stop communicating with Lee. Shuhyun also told Kim that during the trip they would not be able to spend time with Siho and talk to her, which upset Kim somewhat. Meanwhile, Sabin and his girlfriends were very happy that very soon they would be able to go on a trip where they would have a great time. At this point, Siho asked Sabine and her friends if she could join them on the trip. Then Sabin and her girlfriends started laughing at Siho because they thought that Siho would go in a group with Lee, and they thought that Lee just abandoned Siho. Siho couldn't say anything, but from her expression, Sabine knew that something serious had happened to Siho since she didn't want to go in the group with Lee. Then Sabine and her friends felt very embarrassed for laughing at Siho a minute ago. Then Sabine's friends started criticizing her for the nasty things she just said to Siho. Then Siho, with tears in her eyes, began to apologize to Sabin and her friends for not knowing her place and meddling where she shouldn't. Then Sabine and her friends said that they were just joking a little and they told Siho that she could join them on the trip. Siho's happiness knew no bounds, and she immediately pounced on Sabin to hug her as tightly as possible. Sabine only pressed Siho closer to her and began stroking her head, while at the same time trying to understand what could have happened to Siho. The next day, all the classes at Junsio's school went by bus to have some fun and relaxation. While the other students were talking to each other and admiring the view from the window, Kim wanted to address Lee. Then Kim asked Lee if he could find out from her why she finally quarreled with Siho. Lee didn't understand what Kim was talking about, and Kim just said that he heard from several guys that Lee and Siho had a fight, and he decided to confirm this with Lee since Kim knew that Lee and Siho couldn't quarrel. Lee then said that she really wouldn't fight Siho because she thought Siho was too weak to fight Lee, but Kim didn't understand what Lee meant. Lee then suggested that by her quarrel with Siho, Kim meant a fight between them. Kim immediately imagined how Lee would fight with Siho, and he immediately explained to Lee that by quarrel, he in no way meant a fight. Lee then said that she and Siho just had a little argument, and Lee told Kim that he had nothing to worry about. Kim then told Lee that in that case, he would try to make sure Lee had a good time. Lee's expression immediately became darker when Kim asked her about the quarrel with Siho, and then Kim was sure that Lee had a quarrel with Siho, but Lee did not want to talk about it. During the trip, Sabin and her girlfriends enjoyed the ride and the views from the bus window, while Siho sat with a sad face the entire trip. When all the students from Junsio's school finally arrived at the amusement park, Sabin and her friends were very happy, while Siho still had a sad expression on her face. At one point, Sabin simply couldn't stand it anymore, and she immediately started yelling at Siho. Sabine told Siho that because of her gloomy face, she and her friends lost all their good moods. Sabine then grabbed Siho's cheeks and started trying to put a smile on Siho's face. Sabin failed to cheer up Siho and demanded that she tell her what exactly happened to her since she now constantly walks around with a sad face. Suddenly Siho accidentally saw Lee, and they both looked at each other with an ominous and touchy look. Sabine then turned her attention to Lee and realized that Siho had quarreled with Lee. Sabine then told Lee and Siho to make up right now, to which Lee and Siho told Sabine not to interfere in their affairs and then Sabine asked them to explain to her why they had a fight. Then Lee told Siho that she would also like to understand the reason, what she did to make Siho suddenly harbor such a grudge against her. Siho didn't know how to explain everything to Lee since she promised Kim that she wouldn't tell Lee that Kim liked Lee. Then Siho realized that Lee was innocent of what Kim told her, and that this whole situation happened only because of herself. Siho also looked at Lee, and Siho understood that the only reason for her quarrel with Lee was only her jealousy since she was afraid that she would lose Kim. Even fully understanding that Siho herself was to blame for what happened, 
she still didn't know what to do now, and she simply ran away from Sabine. While Siho was trying to escape, all she could think about was that she was acting like an idiot now. Siho also thought that she had left Lee completely at a loss, which made Siho feel extremely awkward and lousy in this situation.